Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, didn't start when yet. back in the live stream is starting. Ladies and gentlemen. You're oh, ready to go. Yet. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being patient with us. We will now begin our school board meeting for June 24th, 2020. May we have a roll call, please? I, I would like to call the, the meeting to order. May we have a roll call, please? Mr. Breland? Here. Ms. Bryant? Present. Ms. Brown? Present. Ms. Kennedy? Here. Ms. Liggins? Present. Ms. Orr? Ms. Riviera? Ms. Thompson Morgan? Here. President Sweeney? Here. Is Ms. Orr? And Ms. Riviera, Director Riviera, are they not on yet? Ms. Riviera is here, present. Ms. Orr? I see that she's on. Here, here. I'm here. Thank you. Now, we'll, may we have a moment of silence? Thank you, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the, and Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Dr. Berry? The superintendent report, please. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for your attendance this evening. The first um, report that I have for you all is going to be the COVID-19 draft re-entry planning update number two. Um, we did one at the committee meeting introducing the concept. And we promise to keep this front and center to make sure that everyone understands what the process is and where, where we're going along. So I will wait for Ms. Althoff to put up the presentation, please. Thank you, Ms. Althoff. So this is our second update. So the first few pages that you will see are the initial update that basically talks about the potential options for the 2020-2021 school year. Go ahead, Ms. Alta. So the foundation for this um, re-entry plan are the three components that you see. We'll be dealing with health expertise, educational expertise, and the um, comprehensive plan for the school district of the city of York. Go ahead, Ms. Althoff. These are the slides from the previous presentation, but I just wanna keep them front and center. Um, the, the, ex, the essential expectations are academics, um, physical and structural, business operations and social and behavior. Those are the components or, or the, the different buckets that we will be dealing with. There will be three different scenarios. Go ahead, Ms. Althoff, you're fine. There will be three different scenarios that will be a possibility for the 2020, 2021 school year. One being the hybrid mode. Um, the definitions are to the um, 
I guess it would be your right of the screen. Um, one would be the in-person mode and then in-person learning mode. And then finally the remote learning mode. Go ahead, Mrs. Zaltoff. And the, the next few slides explain each one in detail. Just understand that as we move through this, it is a possibility that we can start at one place and then end up have to, having to move between hybrid, in-person and or remote. So we just don't know what's going to happen with state guidelines as well as district needs. But um, the plan is to start however it is that the state clears us to start. Go ahead, Mrs. Altoff, you can skip the next two. Okay, so the updates till now. Go ahead, Ms. Altoff. So, so far we've taken a variety of action steps towards re-entry. We are diligently working to have a thoughtful, organized and informational process for our um, Bearcat Blueprint, a guide for reopening schools. We will um, consistently communicate and seek community input. Hence the reason why you will see lots of updates weekly about what is going on. Thank you, Ms. Altal. So our planning pathway consists of three parts collecting data from families and, um, and as many people as we possibly can in the community at large, communicating seven ways and seven times. That's very important in the communication world. Um, the goal is to have input from at least 50% of the student, I mean, the, the community population. So we want as many parents as possible to fill out this survey. This survey is located on our website, you can access it on the app. We have um, it in bold red. So when you go on the website, it is one of the first things that you see. We are working hard to reach as many Bearcat families as possible to get your input. So when it is time to roll out this plan, we can have as many people's opinions and or input as possible. Thank you. You miss out all. This is what the district survey would look like. It is on the website. It has the small note at the top. As you can see, um, the survey has been up since June 10th. Um, it is online in English, Spanish, and Haitian Creole. Each time a person fills out the survey, the numbers update. As of right now, we have a total of 838 surveys completed, which is not a bad number, but it's a far cry from our goal of half of the population, which would be more like 3,000. So we have some work to do, but you see that several folks are have filled out the survey and are accessing it. Again, it can be accessed through the website or through the app. Okay, Ms. Alto. So this is just some data that I, we've collected from the survey just to kind of see what the progress is showing. And basically this particular pie chart is showing that the, the vast majority so far is looking to be physically in school while social distancing and adhering to CDC guidelines. That's 43.5%, almost half of who took the survey feels like if they had their choice, they would want kids to be physically at school 100% of the time, but adhering to CDC guidelines and social distancing. The next pie chart, again, gives you the resounding preference to um, all want to, wanting to attend school as many days as possible. So 38.2% is saying that they want students participating in school all days of the week, and, and if necessary, in two shifts and smaller class sizes, if that is an option or a need. Go ahead, Ms. Altov. 
this um, specific slide talks about different things that we were asking concerning the CDC guidelines and wanted to know if parents would agree or disagree to them. The first one is temperature checks. The second one is washing hands. The third one is wearing a mask. The fourth one is eating meals in the classroom. The fifth one is one-way traffic in the hallways. The sixth one is modified or no outdoor recess. The seventh one is modified or no physical education class. And the last one is modified access to restrooms, which just potentially means that we would be looking at having scheduled bathroom breaks to make sure we're adhering to social distancing. So this is the most telling slide for me because it gives us a breakdown of all of our schools and what percentage of the school population has completed the survey. As you can see, we have some work to do because we have some schools that are not even in the double digits yet. So we are going to work as a team with individual schools to see what we could do to push the, um, the, uh, the attendance of parents filling out the survey, making sure we get as many responses as we possibly can. We probably will look at the idea of doing some individual calls to parents and walking them through the survey process because we do know we have some populations of folks that are not social media friendly or that just don't participate in a lot of online activity. So we want to make sure that we are reaching as many families with as many situations as we possibly can. Next slide, please. So in our total picture for the state, as you know, we are a part of intermediate unit number 12, and they have established some subcommittees for reentry. I'm very excited to engage and um, engage our school community in this work. I think it's very important that our district leadership participate in as many aspects and as many areas as possible. So we have an entire team that is participating in this work to make sure that we are collaborating both with all of the IU school districts that are around us, including Franklin, Adams, and York County, as well as making sure that we are a voice at the table and in some retrospects in leadership roles in this um, IU-12 work. So I'm very proud of our folks for being a part of these committees, being active participants, and providing expertise in their specified departments. This is a list of all of the folks on our leadership teams that are participating in the various committees. As you can see, we have some committees that have two people on them. I'm very proud of the fact that we have representation on all of the committees. Next slide, Jess. Thank you. And so finally, we are also forming a stakeholder committee for the for, for fall reentry. And we are beginning to send out invitations to folks as you can see, we have a list of some representatives that we will be looking for to serve on this committee. We will be soliciting some parents. Um, I've actually already solicited a few. We've all, we will also be soliciting representation from the teachers union, the um, ESP union, the mayor's office, um, representative Hill Evans office. We wanna make sure that we have an array of folks serving on this committee that are representative of our school community, as well as our community at large. So this is our opportunity to get feedback from the outside 
um, and be able to mesh it with the feedback that we're getting from the IU as well as the expertise in the room in the school district of the city of York to come up with the best plan possible for re-entry. That is all I have. Thank you, Board of Directors. Does anyone have any questions for me? I have a question, Dr. Barry. Yes, ma'am. Um, How are you, Mrs. Thompson Morgan? <laughs> hello, I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, is does the faith-based community um, account for the uh, the community members? Yes, there are faith-based members on that committee as well. Okay. There's three of them, I believe. I didn't put I didn't put names up because I wasn't able to put everybody's name because I haven't gotten confirmation from everybody that we invited. So we decided it was better to just let you know what the positions were. And as we get the as we get all of the um, RSVPs back and commitments, then we will in our next report, hopefully be able to put names up. Fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions, board of directors? Okay. That concludes my report. Thank you. Okay, I would like to announce also that prior to the meeting, we were in executive session discussed in personnel manners. Uh, at this time, we have initial items of concern, the adoption of the 2020-2021 budget. So move. Hold, hold on a second here. What are we asking? The resolutions are on the screen. Yeah, hold on a second here. Um, before, before we uh, go to uh, action items on these matters, there has to be the opportunity for the public to comment on whatever we're going to be voting on. Uh, no, we weren't voting. There... What's that? We were not voting. Well, aren't we coming up to the items of an initial concern? We're giving the um, school board directors an opportunity to ask questions about any of the budget. Um, and Mr. Um, Diffendall is available <laughs> to ask specific, to answer specific questions about revisions. So if anyone on the school board of directors has questions about the budget, Mr. Diffendall and I will tag team to try to get those questions answered. Yes. Okay, but what the only thing I'm I'm asking is, are, are you still on the superintendent's report? I concluded the superintendent's report. Okay, all as I'm saying is whatever, since we're going into action items here, there has to be an opportunity for public comment before the vote, the board votes on any action items. We weren't at action items yet. Action items, these are items of initial concern, Jeff. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm seeing here is these items of initial concern are going to be action items. It's not part of the consent agenda, but if you if the board can see in the action items there's going to be resolutions that the board are going to be considering once they're moved and second in for discussion. And before we get into any of that, public is going to have to be able to make public comment on any matters that the board is going to vote on before they actually vote on those items. <coughs> this is Director so Brown. This is Director Brown. I think what we're missing is under the superintendent's report, there were there were some budget revisions that uh, weren't discussed in public. Is there any question about the budget? Directors, do we have any questions about the budget? I'm using my Mr. Diffendall, will you please go over any of the budget revisions, please? Thank you, Dr. Barry. 
My name is Dave Diffendahl. I'm stepping in for uh, Dick Snodgrass, who has been uh, sidelined uh, this evening. It's my pleasure to join you. Uh, a few things that have happened since the May budget presentation. One is the Pennsylvania legislature and Governor Wolf have passed and signed. Hold on, let me move. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute has flat funded education for the 2021 school year. So what that means is the state subsidy provided by PDE will remain unchanged from 1920 into 2021 school year. And that's a impact of about $2.5 million. And in the PDE district only basically a cost of living or an inflationary uh, basic subsidy adjustment. They have rolled. They have rolled that back. So for the budget year uh, 2021, the state has flat funded educational spending across the Commonwealth, and New York City School District is, is part of that. So in response to that uh, reduction of revenue, Dr. Barry, the cabinet, and Dick, before he was sidelined, came up with some cost reduction measures to offset that reduction of state subsidy revenue. Uh, and we can talk about what they are. Uh, the second major change is the CARES Act. Sometimes you'll hear it called ESSER or the CARES Act. That has given funding to the district of about $3.7 million for the impact of COVID-19, uh, additional, co additional cost additional cost cleaning and deep cleaning, uh, any personal protection and et cetera. So those are the two changes. So we have a reduction of this subsidy. We have an increase of uh, funding from the CARES Act. Uh, obviously coming along with the review of the CARES Act is, is a level of expenditure of, of, the, of that revenue. So we're gonna spend money by cleaning equipment, additional cleaning equipment, hand, hand sanitizer, uh, thermometers, you, you name it, uh, the district will be buying those, especially as Dr. Barry just reviewed, the majority of our, uh, of our students and their families look to come back to in-building construction. Uh, so with that comes additional costs and additional preparation and additional cleaning after the school day is over. So there are the two major changes, a reduction from the Commonwealth and then an increase from the federal government. Uh, I will caution uh, what Dr. Barry said as well. This COVID-19, the requirements and the CDC guidelines are changing. We do not necessarily fully know all the impacts. For example, and that is transportation. The district spends annually about 2.7 to 2.8 million dollars transporting our kids, special ed kids predominantly, but also other kids uh, uh, to the STEAM Academy as well. Uh, if, if the social distancing guidelines as we understand them now are in place, the amount of transportation costs will increase substantially. So there are many unknowns uh, and we have budgeted uh, the, the revised budget or what I'm calling the June budget uh, the bottom line is the same. Uh, the May budget was revenues and expenditures netted to zero. So revenues and expenditures exactly match. This June budget is the same. Revenues and expenditures exactly match and net to zero. So there's no growth of the uh, fund balance and there's no consumption of the fund balance. It's a, a flat budget, revenues equal expenditures. Um, Obviously, there's many unknowns. Uh, there's obviously very much concern uh, about what the district will be required to do uh, to meet those. So there's a, I have, in, I've worked now 33 years. I've never seen a level of uncertainty in business and, and in uh, budgeting that we have with this, this situation where the Commonwealth has reduced funding and the federal government through the CARES Act has increased it but there are demands going to be on that CARES revenue. So I just wanted to uh, go over that. Uh, we have worked, uh, Dr. Barry, the cabinet and Mr. Snodgrass have worked to uh, bring uh, 
expenditures down in, in response to the Pennsylvania legislature's and the governor's uh, legislation that reduces the, uh, the revenue to the district through the, the basic state subsidy. Um, but again, some of that is then offset by the increase in the CARES funding. But the concern is how much of that uh, is going to be spent uh, complying with all the guidelines and mandates that will come forth from the CDC, from PDE, uh, and other uh, legislative bodies. Um, with, I do have a question. Uh, this is Director Morgan uh, speaking, and thank you, uh, Mr. Diffendahl, with um, it, you know uh, just uh, giving us your time in this way. Um, very generous of you. Uh, my question is with regards to the CARES Act, I would assume this is a one-time um, funding from the, um, from the government um, to the school district. And um, just keeping in mind what you had stated with um, any requirements from the CDC and um, anything regarding um, uh, PDE, things like that. Um, What would you think, um, as far as us staying within the budget, uh, the parameters of the th 3.7 million? And that seems like an awful lot of money, but you know we're in uncharted territory. Um, this is something that no one has ever uh, experienced in this in this century before. Um, what if we do ex exceed that amount? Do we go into do? Are we at risk of tap, having to tap into that fund balance? Yes. So if we if, if we expend more than the three point seven million and all other expenditures remain the same, we would uh, tap into or consume fund balance to pay for all of the necessary requirements and mandates that may come to us. Um, I think I think that the the uh, the risk is is twofold. One is what I'll call an everyday risk which is disposable masks, uh, consumption of hand sanitizer, uh, soap, paper towels, et cetera, et cetera, kind of a daily day-to-day -day type of uh, occurrence. And then secondarily, and probably the bigger risk and the bigger unknown is the transportation impact. That has me uh, very concerned. If you take twice as many buses as you need today, you're going to go from 2.7 to 5.4 million dollars of transportation. So 2.7 million of that, of that uh, 3.7 million is is gone in a flash. So that's you know, that's, that's uh, a sig you know obviously that's a significant uh, impact. The transportation is still kind of uncertain, and there's recommendations and there's different conversations taking place. Uh, on the transportation impact, uh, and so we, I can't say and tell you tonight with certainty what, what the district will do in response to those, uh, um, to the transportation, because they're not finalized. The, the guidelines and mandates are not, we're not finalized, so it's hard for me to give you an estimate of what that will be. I will tell you there will be some increase for transportation. How much is the, is the wild thing, is the unknown. Thank you. Other questions from Mr. Diffendahl or myself? I do have another question. What, so what would you recommend? I mean, we can project the cost of the various um, items needed, um, but how, how do we, proceed that we don't go over? I mean, my question is, do you have any recommendations? I know this is just as new territory for you as everybody else. What would be your strongest recommendations that we don't um, exceed the 3.7 million? Yeah, what I would make a couple recommendations. One is that we track it monthly. Okay. Uh, project as well monthly. Uh, that's one. The second thing I would do is that we prepare early on a list of 
trying to not spend in other areas to potentially offset uh, the transportation or any other impact that's unknown at this time. So if we think we're going to spend uh, more than the 3.7, we need to we need to get the word out early and often to see what we can do about it immediately, but then project it for the year and then come up with some other potential offsets uh, to, uh, to the budget impact of additional COVID-19 costs that are not covered. Mm -hmm. Will there be an audit um, for, at the end of the year as to how this money was spent? Um, yeah, there, through the year, what can we do to um, minimize any impact with regards to transparency and what's presented to to the board? Yeah, it goes back to my initial point of uh, of one is uh, tracking the cost monthly, reporting that to cabinet and to the board. Uh, that's one, uh, and then uh, to answer your second question about an audit or a review, these are part of our federal. Uh, federal allocation of funds. They go, all federal monies go through an annual review with our federal programs coordinator. Uh, she works a couple doors down from me uh, and I will be working with her uh, on, the, on the CARES Act money and the tracking of the costs. So my recommendation is that the, the business office reports monthly to cabinet and to the board uh, and to the public where we are, and then of course, along with that is anything else we're learning as this, this kind of unfolds or manifests itself as we get into the school year. Um, if there's any uh, balance at the end of it all, um, does the money then get returned to the federal government? How does that work? Ms. Tanya, there's never a balance left over. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's no, hey, there's wishful thinking. There's, uh, I promise you, there's never a balance left. <laughs> when I started at the school district, I thought everybody was giving me a high five every day, but all they were doing was putting their hand out looking for more money. Right. So, uh, very sediment. Uh, I find it highly unlikely that there will be funds left at the end of the 2021 school year related to the care. Mm -hmm. I, I would only add to what Mr. Diffidal is saying that eventually as we begin to generate this list, we will make sure that we're generating everything that we can possibly think of that is a need versus that which is a want. And those wants will go on the end of the list for that for, for those as unmet needs for those extra funds that are left over. So we will have a list of availability mm -hmm. for things that we don't necessarily need for per se, but may want for additional security measures or additional safety measures. And that will become our unmet needs list that we will kind of cross off in, um, in order of need. Okay, it makes sense. This is, um, this is Director Kennedy. I actually have a, uh, a question and possibly two. Um, since we were in the process of, of, of waiting on receiving these, these funds um, through the CARES Act, do we have any idea of the cost of what we have spent thus far in trying to um, begin the process? to take care of the things that we need to take care of within the buildings? And then uh, if so, are those costs going to be reimbursed in any way? The answer is uh, I could give you a rough estimate of what we spent. Uh, it's probably $50,000. We bought some equipment that is a mobile disinfectant units to take through the buildings. Uh, and they've had to be used in several occasions uh, for people that uh, were either, they were uh, uh, exposed to the COVID-19 virus. So out of an abundance of caution, we disinfected the areas they worked or visited. Uh, so there's, there's that hard cost. Uh, 
and then there's obviously additional uh, buildings and grounds has done replacements of air filters more often than what they would because there's concern of the COVID-19 virus being in the HVAC system. Uh, so there's been uh, more frequent changing of filters. There's been increased uh, custodial activity and cleaning, uh, especially those areas where there's been any exposure to uh, anyone suspected of having COVID-19. Uh, that is a question I had for uh, Mr. Snodgrass before uh, he uh, um, uh, finished, uh, finished his tour yesterday and, um, uh, and I did not get an answer from him. I will tell you the amount of guidance on ESSERS or the CARES Act has been very little. Uh, basically, they told us it's coming and the rules of the road, as I call them, have not been very uh, forthcoming. So they're, they're, the PDE and the, and the federal government are, are uh, working on that just like everything else is going on. It's kind of comes in drips and drabs. And some of the things they say initially, they, they change later, much like the guidance on the disease itself. So it's, uh, uh, but we will certainly do everything we can to uh, the, the funds that we have spent so far to get them applied to the CARES Act funding. Mr. Diffendall, can you tell them how many of these disinfecting units have we bought? I have seen, I believe it's two, but I would have to defer to Chuck Works in Buildings and Grounds. He's kind of spearheaded that effort. Um, and I we're looking for more. Yeah, um, correct. I, I was told that we were looking for more. School board directors, these are the um, units that they can go in and immediately disinfect offices or office spaces. And then we have to stay out of the areas for a minimum of about 15 minutes while the um, the chemical cures, or I, I, don't, I shouldn't use the word chemical, while the disinfectant cures. Um, as he said, they're used in high traffic areas or specific areas where we have a suspicion of exposure or finding out that there is someone who has contracted COVID-19 who's been in that area. Yeah, I, I certainly expect us to buy more of those machines. Again, it's a question of availability. Because I think it took us a while to get these two, right, Mr. Diffendall? It took us, I think they were ordered early on in the process because we were looking to rent one from another school. And um, with the cost, it was, it was more effective for us to buy them. And it wasn't that we weren't prepared to buy them, school board directors. It was that the availability was low and um, we were having a difficult time getting them in. So I think they were ordered in like March and yeah. we didn't get them until late May. Uh, again, supply and demand. And as you can imagine, the demand is uh, exceptional. And I believe they're at least $6,000 a unit. Other questions? Thank you, Mr. Diffendall, for stepping in. We appreciate you. Anytime. Thank you for having me. Okay, Ms. Sweeney, it looks like we have no more questions. We'll give a little bit more wait time. Any more I questions? I have uh, a question. Is there an, um, a uh, if they, if you all apply for the um, COVID safety plan, I can't hear you, Mrs. Um, Thompson. Is that Miss Thompson Morgan? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. There's something going on with my sound. That's okay. Go one more time, please. The COVID safety grant. Oh, the the safety grant. We are currently applying for that. I think it's about four hundred and twenty thousand some odd dollars. Um, we have begun that application. Mr. Diffendall and um, Mrs. Bowman have been working on that this week. The deadline for that application is June 30th. So those are funds that we are applying for. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so right. yeah, I've worked with Dr. Bowman. Uh, I've given her the information she needs to fill the paperwork out for the submission. She said she will have it ready to go Monday or Tuesday of next week. 
and Tuesday, June 30th is the deadline and Lori uh, or Dr. Bowman has committed to, uh, to having that uh, in and uh, submit it to. And those are guaranteed funds, correct, Mr. Diffendahl? Yes, that's correct. Uh, and, and again, it's, it's basically a lot of what we talked about, masks, hand sanitizers, air filters, plexiglass barriers, thermometers, face masks, um, it, you know, so a lot of this gowns and face shields. Cleaning uh, solution for those new machines. Disinfecting, disinfecting solution, both in a, a bottle form, but also in the uh, machine the aer aerosolized or misted. Oh, it's disinfected. What is this? Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Any more questions? All right. Any more questions? Okay. With that being said, we're going to go down to number to committee to 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 the committee reports, please. Director Liggins, do you want to speak on that? Yes, I can. Good evening, um, all that are listening. Um, my name is Mrs. Liggins. I'm going to report on our buildings and buildings and buildings and grounds. Uh, the schools have been closed, and all facility use permits are on hold until such time uh, as our facilities are deemed safe for use. Um, we do have some projects in progress. Um, there's uh, currently uh, at Ferguson, um, that's yet to be um, discussed in future. I I can't see my presentation. Miss Altov. Yeah, I can't see, yeah, I can't see my presentation. Which presentation? Um, the co the committee report for buildings and grounds. You don't see the agenda that's pulled up for everyone to see? Now I do. Wait, hold on. I'm now I can see it. It it was a white screen. Now I do apologize. No problem. Okay, for the projects um, in progress, again, wall repair at Ferguson not yet begun. Um, there are two. There are two. Yeah. Um, pro, uh, we, looks like projects going on at Smith, um, the roof and the masonry repair. And there's a few attachments. We did talk about that at our last committee meeting. Um, those items were discussed. Um, and uh, does any board members have any questions regarding what's being presented tonight? Um, any questions from Dr. Barry? No, ma'am. Thank you, Director Liggins. Okay. Uh, Madam President, that concludes my report on buildings and grounds. Uh, thank you. And you can see the report on personnel committee. So it'll be on the screen in a minute. Dr. Sawyer, are you there? Hello, is Dr. Sawyer here? Dr. Saylor? Saylor, yes, I'm sorry, Saylor. She here? Would she be giving a report today?
I am here. Sorry. I was having trouble unmuting me. I do not have a report today. Okay, thank you. May we have a report from the Board of Representatives, Community Progress? Ms. Thomas? Good evening. You were sent um, the minutes for the April 27th meeting, and you were also sent the minutes for the emergency meeting that was held on June 10th. Um, CPC is going to begin to go back to uh, 50% normalized operations uh, very soon with half the staff coming in and half the staff still working from home. And CPC continues to move forward with its plan in terms of renovation, possible teardown um, and building a new building on where the current building is an OL building is and possibly considering building a new structure on that very site. So the minutes are there for your review. If you have any questions, you can send me an email. That concludes my report. Okay, thank you. Now we'll go back to public comment on agenda items only. Mindy, do you wanna read the disclosure? Is Mindy there? Sorry, I was unmuting. No problem. Okay, public under um, other business public, public comment. Sorry, Jessica, if you could hold the agenda still. Um, basically, we have the Board of School Directors welcomes comments from the residents of the City of York during this public comment section of the agenda items only. Comments shall be limited to comments only. Any questions or concerns shall be taken under advisement only and may be referred to the superintendent for deliberation and or response. Complaints or concerns involving specific students or employees or students slash employees personnel issues or matters should not be initiated at a public meeting. The board will not address or respond to such complaints or concerns. Each comment by participant to this virtual, virtual meeting via Zoom shall be limited to two minutes in duration unless extended by the presiding officer. To offer comment, to offer a uh, comment during the Zoom webinar, you must be a York City resident. Please use the raise hand feature on your Zoom control panel to speak. Unmute your microphone when you are recognized. Participants must state their full name and full address prior to making any comment. Participants that do not follow these established guidelines will not be permitted to speak. Emails from residents of the City of York, which are received by the Board Secretary before 5 p.m. on the date of this meeting related to any agenda items will be shared during public comment section. All emails must include the full name and the full address of the resident that submitted the email. And um, President Sweeney, just as a point of clarification, of all the multitude of emails that I received uh, regarding public comment to be read during this time period of the meeting. I only have one that submitted um, their full name and their um, address. All of the other public comments were either not city residents or they did not include their um, city address as requested or required. Um, from what was submitted on the website. So I only have one public comment to read. Um, there are some, some individuals that submitted public comment but are participants in the meeting. And I would suspect that they will comment during that time period when they um, are instructed to do so uh, by yourself. Thank you. Would you read that one? And we'll go to the audience afterwards. Yes, I have... Um, a public comment from Tyson Singletary. He says, hello, York City School Board. My name is Tyson Singletary. I am a 1989 William Penn graduate and lifelong York City resident. I am a homeowner in York City. I have known Coach Stoner for 30 years. I am writing this letter in support of Coach Russell Stoner retaining his position as head football coach. As I see the main responsibilities as a head coach is to mold young students into future leaders of tomorrow. Sports is a vehicle to do so as it requires discipline, teamwork, dedication, and perseverance. As a young student goes through a season, he or she will face obstacles that they must overcome to succeed. Life presents all of these challenges. 
Coach Stoner has prepared his students for life after high school and not just football. His intense focus on academics has produced tremendous results. The valedictorian and salutatorian for the class of 2020 were football players. Under his tutelage, young men are going to college to receive an education to prepare them for life using sport as that vehicle. The team GPA is over a 3.0. This is just one facet of preparing students for life after high school. He has inspired students to engage in community service and to join the AFL, Accountability for Life. The organization mentors at-risk youth by helping them to develop core values and to become positive members of society. He has turned the program around and instilled confidence and hope into our students slash athletes. When an athlete puts on a uniform, he is representing his community on and off the court or football field. The William Penn football team is representing York City in an outstanding manner. The team has won, but it goes beyond wins and losses. I applaud every coach because they are teachers who give of themselves 24-7 for the success of students. York City needs coaches, teachers, and administrators to lead our youth. I know Coach Russell Stoner is one of those leaders for our student body. The future is very bright. My recommendation is for Coach Stoner to retain his position as head football coach. Sincerely, Tyson Singletary, 733 East Philadelphia Street, York, PA. And that is all I have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Will there be any more public comment? Can you, can you hear me? No, we have two hands up. We have a Sherry Rowland and a Rebecca. Okay, it would be limited to two minutes exactly. Once they give their name and their address. Good evening. My name is Sherry Rowland Washington. I live at 571 West Market Street, York, PA. I know I have two minutes, but the first point of matter, um, Solicitor Ghetto, your school board policy 903 states we would have five minutes to speak. There was not amendment to the policy, so I'm not understanding why our time was reduced to two minutes, but I'm going to keep it short. And hopefully you can address that when I finish. The AFL program and what Coach Stoner does is more than just Coach Stoner. I need folks to separate the man from what he's doing. It hasn't been since, since 2007. We have not sent this many children to college. Eight of the current seniors are going on football scholarship more than any other school in the state. The other students are going on academic scholarships. Our students on the football team take AP course, courses, honors courses. 70% of the class of 2022 are in the top 20 percentile. These are processes we need to replicate throughout the district for the entire school body. We need to separate the opinions from the facts and the data. I then sent an email to you um, suggesting that since 2016, uh, we went from 17% going to college football players, 25%, 29%, and then 64%. The data is there. We have to make choices. This is about equity. And in order to help our children leverage the same opportunities, children at private schools, public uh, suburban schools, we have to put processes in place to remediate what they have lost. So I ask you to not to consider keeping Code Stoner on. I ask you to listen to the concerns of the community and make data informed decisions like you like we expect the teachers to make data informed decisions, the principals to make data informed decisions, the superintendent to make data informed decisions. We need the board to make data informed decisions. Then if there are concerns that the coach needs to address, let's stick to the protocols and address the supervisors. That is all I have to say. Thank you. Who's next? Rebecca. My name is Rebecca Paul, 1212 Wogan Road. I just want to share my experience as a York High football mom 
when my son started at York High in 2016, I remember walking into orientation and my son being asked, will you play football? At that time, York High had such a low support for the football program. I remember going to the games and the stands that were close to empty. Each season after that, the stands became more and more full at each home game with support pouring in from the community, an excitement that a majority of the community looked forward to each week. Soon the team had fans following them more than ever to away games. And finally, York High was drawing in fans and support for the first time in years. As a parent, I was able to see not only the excitement of the players and the fans on Friday nights or sometimes Saturday afternoons, but I was able to see the support of the coaches, brotherhood bonds being made, and the people of York City coming together as a family. Coach Stoner has made sure the students excelled not only on the field, but most importantly in the classrooms. Study hall was mandatory before any practice took place. He made sure every player had food before and after practice. He made sure he worked endlessly with teachers and guidance counselors to help students who may have been struggling academically and kept in contact with teachers to ensure that the player's behavior in the classroom was more than satisfactory. The student athletes were held accountable for their actions on and off the field, in and out of the classroom. To Coach Stoner, it did not matter if you were a star player, if you were not meeting those expectations, you were not starting. Coach Stoner came into a program that was failing and honestly quite laughable. Coach Stoner didn't come in and expect respect. He came in and earned it. In addition to the football program, Coach Stoner initiated AFL and has been able to use this program to help his player prepare for SATs, work on leadership and interviewing schools, skills, learn how to prepare resumes and apply to colleges. He has produced more college students in the last four years than any football program in any recent history of this district. Not only, excuse me. Thank you, Miss Rebecca. That's your two I'm minutes. I'm not. I'm not finished. That's your two I minutes. I am. Who's next? Uh, Salik Dorsey, please. Uh, Salik, would you please state your name and your address? Hello. Salik Dorsey. 506 West Market Street. Your two minutes is running, Kali. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to get straight to the business. Miss Sweeney, you know you know why you're on my coach. Excuse me. And that's, Excuse and that's, me. And that's, Excuse and that's me. That, like, but you, you talk me, personally please? on the phone. And you Thank you. We're not here to judge any board member. Can we have the next one, please? Alyssa Figato, does the two minutes still stand? If the uh, please state your please state your name and your address. Clovis Gallon, four twenty one Atlantic Avenue, York, Pennsylvania. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to read a statement on behalf of the York City Education Association. Honorable members of the board, administration, colleagues, and community members, I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you tonight. For the record, my name is Clovis Gallon. I'm a teacher at William Pennsylvania High School. I'm also a building rep and an active member of the New York City Education Association. On behalf of the teachers, educators, and staff at the and the York City, City Education Association, I'm here to address our concerns regarding this proposed budget from the administration. The administration is proposing cutting 44 positions, 32 teachers, 11 aides, and one assistant principal, and gutting art, music, and physical education and Spanish language, uh, Spanish language classes, as well as other programs that directly benefit of some of, our, some of our most valuable student populations in New York City. Many of these cuts would directly impact class size and reduce the number of adults who can directly interact with students. Teacher aides and behavior specialist positions would be cut, further re reducing vital one-on-one -on -one instruction for students. These cuts would have long-term detrimental effects to our students' educational future. Additionally, despite premature district projections, we still don't know how much uh, federal funding the district will receive. In addition to the 3.8 million in federal funding that York has received from the CARES Act, the district also stands to receive funding from the passage of the HEROES Act, which has passed Congress and has to go before the Senate. This stimulus funding bill, if passed, could provide $1 billion in emergency funding for Pennsylvania schools. The federal stimulus money from these bills could provide short-term emergency funding, which is their intended purpose. We still have time before the deadline to pass a budget. 
rather than take the administration's financial projections and need for proposed cuts at face value, we hope you've been asking the tough questions and examining the budget at all levels to address potential cost savings. We also hope you are looking at potential cuts that won't reduce direct instruction or that would increase class sizes and that you're searching for solutions before taking any action prematurely that could neg negatively and un unnecessarily impact the New York City schools and the students that depend on it. YCA has developed a list of ideas for saving money, examine the safety academy, look at the levels for uh, administration in places to cut 98% of the Mr. Gallen, Mr. Gallen, and despite it, because we have so many people, uh, we have to limit it to two minutes. Thank you for your concern. Uh, Before we move on, this is Director Breland, Mr. Gettle, Attorney Gettle. Yeah. Is he on? A, a question was asked in regards to our policy of stating how long people have to meet. How do we arrive at a two minute deadline? That's what I'm trying to understand. Well, I don't have the policy in front of me. My recollection is that there is reference in the policy to five minutes. But I believe the policy does also indicate that it can be modified based on the circumstances, um, you know, that the board has in, in front of it in terms of the number of people uh, that want to speak. So um, I'm assuming based on the number of people that came into the meeting and potentially also the emails that there was a decision made to reduce that to two minutes. We have 47 directors, we have 47 people who would like to speak tonight. And that's appropriate. This is Director Kennedy, and that's, and that's, and that's appropriate and fair for the public to be able to speak, but I don't think it's, it's right and it's fair because the whole board, I, well, I won't speak for the whole board, I'll speak for me. We, we weren't informed, and I wasn't informed in advance that, that folks' time would be cut in half, and to be cutting people off in the way that it's being done is disrespectful. So we have to figure out how we're going to have everyone have their opportunity to have their say, but be respectful to each other as well. I agree, Director Kennedy. This, this, is, is, uh, this is Director Orr. This is Director Orr. It did not come to my attention either about the time being cut for speakers. When there we were going through the district being charterized, we allowed those folks, and it was more than what we have now. We allowed those folks, those folks, five minutes, and we need to give these folks their five minutes. There was an email sent out. In fact, Director um, Breland and Director um, Lisa um, used both commented on the e on the email that was sent out with the addition to the minutes and where it was uh, the two minutes. Please tell me what my well, comment was. Well, hold on you one second. Hold on one second, agenda, everybody. Listen, hold on one second. Why was the agenda changed? That was my question. Right, I have agreed to know two minutes. Agenda, about the agenda, it wasn't referring to the time frame, at least in, in my awareness. My comment was not about the time, the time in this. I guess my, my, my oh, feeling oh, is this. We have oh. conversations. Hold on, hold on, um, um, Attorney Jeff, a minute. Hold on. We, we have conversations collectively as a board and in the public and so on and so forth about, about the public not participating in meetings and not attending meetings and, and it's at their leisure to do so. And so tonight we have folks that, that want to participate in the meeting and share their thoughts and feelings and they should have the right to be able to do so. And if we're going to have a time a, a time timeline, everyone should have been aware of that to begin with. We can't change things mid mid midstream. All board members were aware of it prior to the meeting. Ultimately, the I board, disagree. Ultimately, you read the, the board. Email. Ultimately, the board can decide whatever the majority desires, as far as the time um, allocation. Again, I think the board has the ability to modify its rules and make reasonable rules based on the circumstances that are presented to it. And the board has to decide based on these circumstances what, if any, modification to the uh, policy is going to be. When does have the right to and not unilateral decision. This is um, um, Director Brown. Let 
first ask, when did the first agenda now when? And the then question? second of all, then second of all, I want to say in that agenda, uh, agenda, was it listed other business and public comments? The same thing that we have here at number 10. On that agenda that was sent out to everybody initially, was number 10 listed there? Yes, it was. Okay, then we were notified. Mr. Breland asked a question about it and I never got a response. On, Mr. Breland on, asked a question and I never got a response. Mr. Breland, please hold on. Now you, you guys talking about being disrespectful. I'm talking right now. Okay, I like I said, we were asked a question and we didn't get a response. Well, I'm Brian. talking right now. I didn't ask for you to jump in. Well, don't cut me I'm off when I'm making a comment. Can I finish talking? Now, whether I didn't or not, finish. not whether, whether <laughs> come on now, come on. Whether or not you guys read it, I'm talking, whether or not you guys read it, that's a different story. But it did go out. I'm done with that. As I was saying, I asked a question and my question was not responded to. And I asked that of Director Bre um, Sweeney. I sent her a text and I answered the email and I never got a response from her. Let's move forward. Let's move forward with this board. I mean, we have a circumstance here where, again, I was told there's 42 people that want to speak. I don't know if that's accurate or not. I know there's a lot of people that want to speak. So the board has to decide based on the number what, if anything, the board wants to allow in terms of um, time limits. It would have been appropriate to have that conversation before now, and we were not well, that, answered. Our question that, was not that answered. Could, that, that may be true. We don't know. We don't always know until, especially in this environment here, we don't know what the number of people are going to be that actually register until they actually register. So we're presented with the situation that we have right now, the board has the opportunity to um, to make a decision on this matter because the board as the, as the majority would want to decide, can decide what the time limit's going to be. But we don't want to continue wasting time arguing about it. I, this so, is Director Brown. I, I agree. And there's too much uh, non-clarity as far as the policy. And I don't want this to become a legal issue later. So I think we need to just stick with the five minutes. We've sat here longer for board meetings, longer than the 42 people that are waiting to speak for at least five minutes. So we just need to go ahead and let those folks speak. Well, I what think I would have to uh, agree with Director uh, Brown in stating that I might also add that um, I don't think it's appropriate to to uh, cut off midstream uh, a participant that had taken time to um, sign up or raise their hand. Um, in particular, Mr. Dorsey, um, no matter if we don't like the content of what he is stating, he is given that right to speak. So um, let's refrain from cutting someone off um, way even prior, he was 10 seconds into his statement. So, um, you know, I think that it I is uh, inappropriate, even if we don't like the content of what he is saying that he has the right to speak. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. all I'm going to say about that. Let me speak on that. Mr. Dorsey wasn't speaking of agenda, agenda items only. We don't know that. Mr. Cut no, what he said to me was, Ms. Sweeney. 10, minutes, 10 you know, seconds. No, you no, don't know that. Yes, I know what he said. He said, Miss Sweeney, let's just get right into this here. You just don't like, and he, he was going, this is a young man that kept calling me at my home. It's a stu mm -hmm. an ex-student that kept calling me at my home, doing okay. the same thing he was attempting to do just now and not speaking about what the agenda mm -hmm. item is, but speaking about personal Contents, put it that way. Now, if you would okay, like okay. to hear Here, it, here's my recommendation. If you would like to hear it, you can have him board. call him and have him go ahead and speak on it. 
Lord, here's my recommendation. If there's if there's discussion about extending the time to five minutes, there needs to be a motion. It needs to be second, and then we'll see where the boat the vote stands on this. I do believe, I do want to state that the board does have the right to to limit the amount of time. So um, I know I, I believe it was one of the board directors. Uh, several of you have stated or talked to you a second ago something about not cutting them off at a certain time. I think the board does have have a right to do that. It has to determine what the time limit's going to be. Obviously, if there's a little flexibility, that's fine, but I don't think setting a limit and then allowing people to talk for 10, 20 minutes is appropriate either. As long as there's a reasonable amount of time, the board can do that. So my suggestion for moving this forward is if somebody wants to make a motion to allow five minutes according to the policy, and there's a second for it, then there can be further discussion and then a vote. If the majority says yay, that's what it is. If the majority says nay, then it's back to the two minutes or something else. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I'm making I'm, I'm, I'm a motion to, or was there a motion on the floor? No, Go, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tommy. Go ahead. Motion to, to um, proceed as policy is stated for five minutes for public comment. I second the motion. There's a motion on the floor. Can I get a second on the motion? This is Director Kennedy. I second the motion. Is there a question on the motion? Question, can we make it three? Five minutes is very long. The motion was for five minutes. And there's a question. That's a second motion. That's not a question to the motion. It's a question to the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Can we do it? Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Ayes have it. Can we have do all in favor again? I believe the ayes have it, Director Sweeney. I, I, well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Since there were some nays and we can't tell in this setting. How many people said nay and how many people said yay? Let's do a roll call vote on it. So we're clear. Miss um, Bryant. Mindy? Mindy? Yes, Miss Bryant. Oh, sorry about that. Nay. Miss Brown? Yes. Miss Kennedy? Yes. Miss Legans? Yes. Ms. Orr? She was having some technical issues, though. One second, Mindy. That, there, there, five, five minutes. Go ahead. Wait a minute. One second. Wait a minute. Just say just say yes when we when we click on. Go ahead. Yeah, OK. Go, go ahead. Yes. Mindy, did you get it? Yes, I did. Miss Riviera? No. Miss Thompson Morgan? Yes. Mr. Breland? Yes. President Onisha Sweeney? No. Okay. 6-3, yes. Okay, let's continue with the public comment. Okay, we'll continue with the public comment. However, Continuing with the public comment, not being rude, but we're not going to have people, as you read your public, your uh, statement under public comment, if you're not following the rules, you will not be allowed to continue your public comment. And Mr. Gallon is requesting to finish his public, Mr. Gallon is requesting. Mr. Gallon, Chloe yeah. Gallon, he is requesting to finish his. He statement. will be. He will be. One yeah. moment, please, Mr. Gallon. And for all that's listening, if you're going to come on and you want to directly try to verbally assault a board member or any cabinet member, you will be muted. Because this is not what public comment is about. Okay, Mr. Do you have any comments from the board? Thank you for that clarity, uh, Director uh, Sweeney, President Sweeney. Thank you. 
That's all I have to say. Ms. Rebecca Pog is requesting to finish her statement as well. I'm recommending that each uh, Clovis Gallon and Rebecca Pog be given uh, three minutes for to finish their comments. That would be in addition to the two they already had, equally okay. divided. Fine. Who's first? Who's first? Uh, this this is Mr. Clovis Gallon. C can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, I will pick up where I left off uh, in my statement. Uh, YCEA or York City Education Association has developed a list of ideas for uh, the board and administration to take a look at for the district to save money. One is to examine the safety academy. Two is to look at all levels of administration for places to cut. 98% of the proposed cuts right now are to people that work most directly with students. Um, Number three is examine uh, how the $3.8 million from the CARES Act can be used. Uh, four is petition senators to pass the HEROES Bill to public, for public debt funding. Five is to revamp or delete the $444,000 Performing Arts Academy. Uh, six is to slightly shorten the school day, which will save money on uh, subs and utilities. Seven is keep the K-8 planning time in the day and assign duties that can be utilized as class coverage time to save on substitutes and class splits. Uh, eight is cut down on the number of special ed supervisors slash staff working at the administration building. Nine is to reduce uh, the security team. And 10 is to have the athletic director position tempor temporarily return to a part-time position uh, as it was before. Our students in York deserve the same opportunities as those in other school districts, but these cuts that are being proposed would have detrimental effects on their education and their future. Again, we ask the school board to address our concerns and review them carefully before taking any action prematurely that could negatively and unnecessarily impact the York City schools and the students that, who depend on it. I would like to close by sharing a petition that was forwarded to you uh, by our constituents in addition to more than 400 York City teachers educators who urge the board, school board members to take a closer look at those proposed, uh, these proposed budget cuts. 306 city residents also agreed that these cuts would be harmful to our students' education. We all know as teachers, administrators, and school board members, residents and parents that York City students are always unfairly the first to be asked to bear the burden of educational program cuts. Uh, I submit this position on, on their behalf of the entire Bearcat family and ask that you please listen to all of our concerns. Thank you for your time and effort in supporting our future Bearcat alumni. Sincerely, Clovis M. Gallon, YCEA representative. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Gallon. This is Rebecca Paul again, just continuing what I was going on before. Um, I just want to mention that Coach Stoner is more than a coach to these students and players. He's a mentor and he's helping them open so many doors for their future. It was nearing my son's end of senior year and he did not have any help from his cross country or track coaches to get in contact with the college coach at your college where he's going to be um, attending next year. And even though it's not football, Coach Stoner took that initiative and got him in contact to have a sit down meeting with the coach at your college. Um, coach Stoner does this because he just supports his students through and through. If it wasn't for Coach Stoner, I don't know that I would be able to say that I'm a proud parent of a salutatorian of 2020. When you have a coach that has more support from the community than any other coach and a coach that has respect of not only the football players, but the fans, teachers, administration, band, et cetera. And when you have a coach who is win having winning seasons back to back and producing more players to go on and play at the next level while also continuing their education on scholarships, why would you want to change that? You do not fix what's not broken. Is there any other football coach in the state of Pennsylvania that can say that they had a valedictorian and salutedictorian on their football team? I think not. You cannot, as a society, continue to ask for change and betterment of our community and then rip away the very thing that provides that for our young men. Thank you. Uh, next one is Bink. Hello. Bink, are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Your address, please. 
My name is Bink Redman. I live at 1006 West Locust Street, York, PA. And I just wanted to say that Coach Stoner, he started coaching when I was in 11th grade going to your William Penn. And since then, I never seen more football players go to college in the past previous years. I've been living in York City all my life, going to sports events all my life. And I never seen kids so dedicated to a team, so dedicated to a community, a family, than under this man's coaching staff. He is the reason these kids want to go to school. He is the reason why these kids go to school now. He's the reason why these kids want to further their education and go to college. You don't take away something that special in a community like this. You, you take it to a whole nother level. You inspire everyone else to be just like him. I, and also, I just want to say one more thing. When I was in high school, I didn't think I could go to college. Right now, I'm enrolled at Lockheed University playing basketball. And one coach told me I could make it to college. And that's all I needed. That's all the push I needed to go to college and do what I'm doing right now. Let Coach Stoner be that coach for everybody else. That's all I wanted to say. Um, Tiff? Hello? Yes, Tiff. Hi, yes. Oh, give me one second, sorry. Um, I'm a parent of a York High football Excuse player. Me, Tiff. Excuse me, Tiff. Uh, state name? your name and your address, um, please. Tiffany Watson, 627 West King Street. Thank you. Yep, I'm sorry. I'm a parent of a York High football player. On behalf of myself and my son, I fully support Coach, Coach Russell Stoner and his program with the William Penn football. My son started high school struggling as he has ADHD and has never really focused or cared about his schoolwork. He never took ownership in his schoolwork or homework and didn't show much interest in his education at all. The summer before his freshman year, my son and I met with Coach Stoner. He advised both, advised both of us that grades and academic success is his top priority. He states that my son must keep his grades up and maintain them in order to be part of the York High football team. I absolutely love the fact that Coach Stoner enforces the student athlete, athlete approach and makes certain the boys come to the field before practices and do their homework and study for tests. I also love that he's a part of the AFL program and gives back to the community. My son is now ranked the top 15% and had the honor roll both first and fourth marking periods of this past school year. He's never had the honor roll before reaching ninth grade and been pushed pushed and supported by Coach Stoner along with myself to do better and continue his academic journey successfully. Without Coach Stoner and his team, I don't know where my son would be right now. He has changed his mind and decided he wants to go to college when he didn't even want to go to the ninth grade. Coach Stoner is a much needed asset and voice for these boys along with our community. Thank you. Uh, Nate Phil. Take your name and your Hello. address, please. 149 Willis Lane. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, uh, um, I'm Nate Phil. I graduated in 2018. And for me, my biggest thing is trust. Hello? Yeah. Um, uh, we can hear you. Oh, uh, um, yeah, like I said, my biggest thing was trust. Like, when first Turner Chris got the job, he told us that he wanted us to play in meaningful football games and go to college. And so we did that. We played in meaningful football games, won the division. Now I'm in college. I'm currently a student at Daddy Stevens College of Technology. For me, it was a, a different path to go to school. I had a journey. But during that journey, they helped me. The tutoring got me. They even gave me, bought me a laptop. Gave me clothes and I didn't have it. So for me, like you got you can't get rid of that for the kids because he's giving kids hope now to go to college. Before that, y'all didn't have nobody going to college. So like for y'all to take that away from kids, you're just killing dreams, bro. Because the biggest thing is y'all wanted to fix the city and he's doing something that nobody else did for a couple years at your town. He changed the culture. We're playing a meaningful football games, y'all going to college. 
staying us out of staying out of trouble. We started AFL, and AFL we going fishing, we doing things we never do, going over the things about everyday life. Please and thank you goes a long way, and now you can see it in schools. Some of the kids are leaders. That's all I really have to say. Khalid Dorsey. Khalid, excuse me. Dorsey. You have three minutes. Five oh six West Market Street. All right, thank you, Miss Sweeney. I have three minutes. But all I want to say is factor to this community, and why I say that is because he is just it's, it's it's like a different approach. Other coaches didn't care about us. Coach Thunder cares. When kids, when kids needed ride home, he was giving ride home. He, he's telling us the shootings in the city, be careful. You need a ride home. Matter of fact, nobody leaves the stadium. Everybody's getting a ride home. Other coaches is letting you walk home while the shootings happen in the city. And that, that, that's not right. And if Coach Thorner was to not get rehired, because he didn't get fired, if he wasn't to get rehired, that would be the dumbest decision that the, the district has ever made. And I say that because Coach Thorner is just, he's the one. And why I say that is because Coach Stoner just gets the job done. He wins football games. He's teaching us to be great young men. And he's putting us in a college. No other coach is putting as many kids into college as Coach Stoner is. And, and like, for real, he's a, he's a father figure for, for, for everybody on the team. See, me, I didn't, I didn't have a father growing up. And Coach Stoner was the one. He, he was like my father. Everybody used to joke around, laugh, and say, oh, that's your pops. But he really was basically like my pops, for real, for real. He was he was he was he was showing he was showing me the way and that and I had to show I had to show my teammates the way because I was like their big brother. Like with everything. Coach Thorner told me to be the big brother of the team. And that's what I was. I was the big brother of the team. He was the leader and I followed him. You gotta be a follower to be a leader. And now I'm a leader because of Coach Thorner. And that and that's that's for real, that's all I gotta say. Coach Thorner is 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 the key to the city. He's the key to the city. That's, that's all I got to say. He's key to the city. Kevin Glover. Hello, Kevin. Kevin, are you there? Kevin? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, can you... State your name and your address, please. My name is Kevin Glover. I live at 240 East College Place. Uh, I have recently just graduated from York High, the 2020 year. I have been a part of Coach Stoner and the football program for just under a year. For, uh, just under a year. I have been coached by a variety of coaches throughout the central Pennsylvania area. And personally, you do not compare to Coach Stoner at all. For what Coach Hunter brings to the York High football program, and I'm not even just talking about his coaching abilities, or I'm talking about the way he's cared about his players and their well-being. He treats us all like his own children. I have yet to see a coach that take as many hours raising money, food, and supplies just to feed and close his players, when in reality he doesn't have to do that at all. Also, he's making a huge difference in our lives when we come to school. He pushed us in the classroom, created an atmosphere where we personally wouldn't accept anything under a B. If that's not the right mindset to place in your head as a young student athlete or just a student in general, then I'm not sure what is. But in conclusion, Coach Stoner has been a coach on the field and an asset in our lives. Taking away would be such a selfish act. Miles. Ms. Miles, state your name and your address, please. Hello, Miles. Are you there? Miles Mardal. Miles Mardal, are you there? Please state your name and your address. Smart GM. Are you dead? Can you unmute yourself, Miles? He is unmuted, but it, he's not speaking. 
Are you going to speak, Miles? Your mic's not on. Um, it, it says on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, excuse me. I can hear you. Wait, 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 Mr. Miles, could you, can you hear me? Over? No, can you start over, please? Uh, Miles Murdoch, 709 South Pershing Avenue. Miles Murdoch, 709 South Pershing Avenue. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay. My name is Miles Murdoch, and I'm a 2002 graduate of York High. All right. I didn't want to speak, and I surely don't want to see Coach Stone or lose his coaching position. When I graduated from William Penn, the school was crumbling down, both figuratively and literally. Things were so bad that what's considered the main building, or at least that's what it was when I was there, was deemed so unsafe it was closed. I was an average academic student when I attended York High, but I couldn't write well. I excelled in extracurricular activities, things like tennis, ski club, music, robotics, and even yearbook, which I took my senior year. When I got to college at LaSalle University in Philadelphia, after being rejected by all my choice schools, I was admitted contingent to the requirements of an academic enrichment program, which meant in my first year, anything less than a C in English, and it was back to York for me. I struggled so hard teaching myself how to study, write, and seeing tutors while acing the hands-on lab courses and communication, I still got a D in my first biology class. While attending York High, I also worked my way up from the George Street McDonald's to York Hospital. However, af however, after that D of B however, after that D, my dream of becoming a doctor slipped further behind. Behind in my goals, I set for myself to graduate in both four years and go to med school, but also behind the millions of students from better socioeconomic statuses who weren't in academic enrichment programs. I switched to psychology, even got a master's certifications, and I went on to do a lot of great things in that field um, travel to a lot of places, make connections, but all that brought me right back here to York, PA. More specifically, right back here with my aging mother and father who I helped care for, and the small business I own, Washington Winona Images in downtown York. Right here with Coach Stoner and even in your classrooms at Jackson and, Hel and Hannah Penn, where I started substitute teaching this past February and plan to continue after the pandemic. Right here, where there's currently and always been a shortage of male and specifically African American male teachers. Right here, where there's a battle with gun violence, poor youth and adult illiter illiteracy rates, ignorance, teen pregnancy, absent fathers, and poverty. Right here, where we've had right here, where we have a graduating class of student senior student athletes, where over 16 have been admitted to colleges. There are a number of construction projects going up all over this world, as well as all over York. However, does anyone remember what set the class of 2002 into chaos as we attended York High and trailers post 9-11 at the dawn of an 18-year in Iraq, 18-year war in Iraq and Afghanistan, which we just pulled out of? We had a terrible, cheap, and faulty foundation, which we discovered literally newspaper and ash were used in place of things like concrete, stone, and brick to build York High. This caused a crack in the building and chaos in my York City School District academic experience. Just like the big beautiful school that these kids get to attend today, as a substitute teacher, as well as a local home taxpayer and a local business owner, I implore you, the school board, the architects and builders of this academic experience to not cut these students short on someone who pours all the right ingredients into them, believes in them, supports them, engages them while they go pro in the classroom as the data indicates. I've had a lot of teachers and coaches from this district do the same for me in my life. And these kids, just like myself in 2002, deserve and need the best. For 30 something years, I've had to wake up to devastating news headlines and pictures pertaining to students from this district and I'm sick of it. Whether it was Trey Mechanic, Ian Brenner, Ricardo Boo Banks, Ben Harpster, Chevelle Jones, Drew Wright, or Anthony Moore, or Anthony Orr, and the list goes on, this is a grief that no student from York City School District should have to carry. We can do better as a community for our youth, our students and our students. So I stepped up, I became a teacher and I also started volunteering with Coach Stoner. I have no doubt in my mind that he is the champion and the stone needed for both this school district, this program and that building. Thank you. Thank you. 
Kelvin Nieves. Calvin, are you there? Hello, can y'all hear me? Yeah, could you state your yeah. name and your address, please? Kelvin Nieves, 229 Grantley Street, York, Pennsylvania, graduate class of York High 2013. Um, so I'm here today because I'm in support of Coach Stone, obviously. Uh, this brings me back to 2010, actually my sophomore year at York High, when we had Timothy Hibbs as the head coach, when he literally brought us from a losing, a losing squad to, to a playoff team. And then that, that same year, that next year that he was supposed to be there, y'all end up cutting. Then we end up going back to, um, to coach Sean Heinel. Nothing against Sean Heinel. He was a great coach while I was there. But you have to look at the track record. Look at what Coach Stoner has been doing and look at what Sean Heinold has done. You don't want to, you don't want to go backwards. If you go backwards, you're going to lose the fan base, you're going to lose the community, you're going to lose everybody that's been there supporting your car. Listen, I didn't, I had to force myself and find a school to go to college. Sean Heinold didn't help me with that. I had literally, I had uh Oh my goodness, what is his name? Anyway, that's besides the point. I literally had to go out and ask for help in order for me to go to college. Yes, I wasn't the great A student in school and all that. And yes, I was a little disobedient or whatever. But at the same time, I wanted to go to college because of the, the opportunity football gave me. Now, being out of school for almost seven years and seeing how the atmosphere has changed in your car and what Coach Stoner has done, Bro, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I like, I get joy. I get joyful every time the season comes around. I get excited to see these kids play games. I get excited to see that the, the stands are full and everybody's out there supporting the York High team. Like, you don't understand. He is the right. Like, he's doing the right thing and putting the right pieces into the it's, into the puzzle because he's helping these kids look for a better future. I didn't have that at the time. I had to force myself to look at that. I could have rolled into the same system just like my friends, like everybody else, going to jail, doing whatever, doing whatever it is New York City has to offer. But no, I chose the other way. I chose to use football as a tool to get me out of the city. And look at me now. I'm a United States Navy sailor. I'm out of York City. I've been out of York City for three fucking, I'm so sorry for my language. I'm so sorry. I've been out of York City for three years and I'm doing good by myself. I'm doing good for myself. And like, you have to you have to understand that people when you put people the right people in the right place they're going to help the kids out they're going to help them look for something better in the future like you you just can't cut them because you're doing the same thing back when i was in in 2011 going into my senior year you guys were going to cut the football program i literally begged and cried at the school board meeting when it was at the york hotel down there on uh market street i literally begged and cried begged and cried in front of you guys and just to, just to keep the program going so I don't lose my senior year so I can have at least an opportunity to go to college. And y'all doing it the same. Y'all doing it to these kids now. Y'all ripping them. Y'all ripping them from everything that they're trying to earn and deserve. Like, it, it's just wild, man. I say keep him, man. He's, he's doing the right things. He's sending these kids to colleges. Literally, like, what was it? Like, 2,651 uh, signees for a petition to get it, to keep him as a coach come on man that's ridiculous the community is behind them literally the community is behind them and y'all not paying attention and y'all not listening and that's what's wrong with the world right now nobody's listening and that's all i gotta say man thank you demir banks demir banks are you there Demir Banks, are you there? Demir Banks. Yeah. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, yes, all right. Uh, my name is Demir Banks. Uh, I live at 250 South Albemarle. Um, I'm going to 
speak from the heart because that's all I know how to do. Um, when I remember when Coach Stoner had first came here, and um, I just I was thinking to myself, he has to turn this he has to turn this thing around. I was embarrassed every single game. Um, as y'all know, uh, we had to go through a loss of seventy to six to Red Line. That was truly disrespectful. And um, all I wanted to do was win. Uh, we were dysfunctional, uh, lack discipline, and simply disrespectful to our staff, our coaching staff, and um, we just were undisciplined. Um, Coach Stoner came in with his family and his entire, uh, and an entirely new coaching staff uh, willing to flip the program around while investing in us as individuals. Um, I was going through tragedies and hardships at the time uh, of my, I think my, my sophomore and my junior year, which would have been 2016 and 2017. And um, my dad was also incarcerated uh, for the entirety of my high school career, except for my uh, senior year. And I just wanted to make him proud at the moment. Um, and Coach Stoner was able to make that possible, him and his coaching staff. Um, it's so many names to say. I, I won't really uh, say all of them, but they know I love them. Uh, you've seen the culture that we've created throughout these past years. We have gave the city something to be proud about. Um, but for some reason it all somehow came with envy. Uh, disrespecting Coach Stoner and his team and us is, is, is basically disrespecting me. Um, therefore, firing him is basically firing me from this city because I, I see him being so successful. How can I bring success to, success to this uh, city if it's, if it's not able to be, um, if it's not possible for him, then it's not possible for me is what I'm saying. Um, again, I'm speaking from the heart on this. Um, I'm in college now. Um, I'm applying the same rules that he has passed to me. Uh, still trying to get away from the crabs in the barrel, as he would say. Uh, he is still producing successful young student athletes. Um, his entire career here at York High has been overshadowed by dilemmas. And I have yet to see a bit of appreciation towards him. And um, that says a lot. And I would like to thank you for uh, allowing me to speak um and thank you nergena byard hello yes can you <laughs> state your name and your address please um my name is bonnie byard um 218 Chestnut Street. You hear me? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. First, I want to say good evening to your Kai alum and to the board. Um, I was the manager for Coast Owner in the year 2017, 2018, my senior year. That was the York High's first season. They went one and um, I meant nine and one. The first winning season in 10 years. Um, I wasn't a player, but I was a manager. So I seen the boys on and off the field. Um, Coach Stoner really came in and just took over the whole football program. And what I mean by he took over, I mean, he put the boys first. He never, he, he always made sure they were good on and off the field. He never, uh, like, I don't know what I'm trying to say when I say that, but, like, he always made sure the boys was good, made sure they ate before practice, made sure they ate after practice, because some kids don't go home and eat dinner at all. So what I'm saying, where I'm coming from as a manager, I respect him 100%. And most of the people on the school board know me and know my mom personally, and y'all know how, how, how I'm coming for him. So when I'm saying this, I'm saying y'all trying to kick him off or fire him or whatever y'all trying to do, why? He did, he put his family into this whole program, his daughter, his son, his, his wife, his wife, mom, his wife, dad, like 
what, what's, what's wrong with Coach Turner being a student? If the community like him, if the students like him, why are y'all trying to take him off? He's, he's, he changed this whole thing around. No one used to go to the York High game. Nobody. But now we start winning because Coach Stoner, everybody want to go. Y'all got a problem with it? I'm so confused. This is our school. This is our team. This is our city. So what are y'all mad for? Y'all supposed to be the student. Y'all supposed to be the student. Y'all supposed to be the school board. Y'all supposed to be behind us. Y'all supposed to care about the student. Y'all don't. I, and, I, and I'm saying it as a student. Y'all don't care. Obviously, you don't care about how we talking about Coach Stoner, how he's a problem. For what's, what, what's the problem? What's really the problem? Because there isn't none. Y'all, y'all, y'all making up things for no reason. This, that's my coach to forever. And I wasn't, a, I wasn't a football player, but all my brothers play football. And all my, my, my brothers didn't play for your Kai, but we, they know Coach Stoner. And they know Coach Stoner that came in here and made the after school program for these boys to go to school. They're in college. I've never seen a your Kai student in college. They're either dead or in jail. My boys, the boys I went to school with, they're in college, and I'm proud of them. When I see them now, I just look at them like, oh, my God, I'm so proud of y'all. Y'all doing y'all thing. And Coach Stoner, you're doing your thing. Even though we had this meeting today, Coach Stoner was still out there doing practice. Any other, any other coach would have been, like, worrying about what's going on. He was still at practice making sure his boys was good. So what, what's, what's really the problem? That's all I got to say. I was a manager in 2017, 2018 year, and I – going to be there for him and support him and his family forever. So that's all I got to say. And I said what I said. Thank you. Dejan. Dejan, state your name and your address, please. Hello. You guys hear me? Dejan, state your name and address, please. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Will you state your name and address, please? Hello, I'm Dejan Sylvia Johnson, and I live on 680 East Princess Street. And uh, I just want to say I'm 17 years old going to my senior year. I transferred to William Penn High School in February from York County School of Technology. And ever since I made the transition, I felt at home. Russell Stoner has provided me plenty of college opportunities in a matter of four months. Coming from tech, I wasn't academically where I needed to be or where I wanted to be. But coach always made sure I was a student athlete before anything. Since I made the transition, I got all A's and B's and we constantly have talks about elevating my GPA. He's family, nothing less. I know I could count on him on any situation, and I'm glad and fortunate to have someone I can count, come to about anything and more proud to call him my coach. Love you, Coach Stoner. Dejour Stewart. I'm mute, I'm mute. Hello? Yes, Dejour, would you state your name and your can address? Can you hear me? Please? Yes, we can. Will you state your uh, name and your name address? My name is Dejour Stewart. I live on five. My name is Dejour Stewart. I live on 545 Pennsylvania Avenue. May I begin? Yes, you may. <laughs> so, my thing is, Stoner is family to me. He pits kids in colleges. He bends over backwards for his student athletes. Before that, you just have athletes. Not worrying about the GPA, not worrying about going to school. He paid the road for these kids, and you guys are trying to take away, take it away from him, and it's disrespectful. And I don't really talk as much. I don't like do a public speaking, but when something like this serious and this true to heart, I get emotional. And this man does everything for these kids, and it's like I don't understand it. I don't know why y'all got a grudge against him and everything. And in the past couple months, the allegations saying that he let he told kids not to run track and to play football—that's false. I used to run track for Coach Jones and be more. Coach Track was not organized. They did not put in the effort. Didn't worry about our grades. Coach Stoner did. I chose my decision to play football because it's better for me. And that's my, that's my liking. That's my goal to play college football, which I'm at IUP right now playing football. So all that, I'll get to him saying he can't play, kids can't play, run track, play basketball. That's false. Coach, Coach Jones and Maine, all of them, they all had a grudge against him. And that's why, because they took his favorite, their favorite athletes away from him. Basketball, you see Toby Stokes, you see 
everyone playing basketball and football because there's agreement. And on top of that, Stoners kids, we go to they went, we started study hall. No other, no other um team in York High City in York City, uh, where you Penn went to study hall during those times when we were there. So like I don't understand. Hope you I hope you guys reconsider this honestly. Um, Stoner man, I love you. The seat's behind your back, <laughs> you know. And um, I hope you guys really think your decisions and the allegations and him saying that I wasn't playing. Also, that I was playing football, ineligible. That's false information because I was running track on eligible with Coach Jones, but he tried to pin it on Stoner. So that's a lie also. Cause I always had great grades during high school. I was always eligible to play football when I played football when I was currently at William Penn. So those are false accusations as well. So thank you and have a nice day and win the day. Maurice Fiza or Fiza? Fizel. Thank you. Uh, my name is Maurice Fizel. Live at 615 Cleveland Avenue. Um, from the beginning, when I got here four years ago, um, Coach Stoner never forced me to do what I, what I was supposed to do. He always gave me an option. He told me that you only get better or worse, you never stay the same. He's been a strong role model in my life. I consider him a father figure. Um, I'm currently about to attend um, Indiana University of Pennsylvania this coming fall, all because of him. If I had my way, I probably wouldn't have graduated high school. He's been the type of person that you can tell all your secrets to. He's been a father. He's been there for me through everything. I needed a ride to Kutztown for um, a visit. He gave me a ride. He took the time out of his day to give me a ride. He bought us all passes to go work at work out at Crunch this um, for the next six weeks before we go all go off to college because we needed somewhere to work out because we're not allowed to work out at the normal place that we do. He did that for us out of his own pocket, his own money, so that we could get somewhere and be better for ourselves. My junior year, I had a 3.0 my whole entire year. My sophomore year, I had a 1.5 it was as a cumulative GPA, he changed my life. And I respect the man, I respect his, his family. And I feel as though that you guys trying to fire him would only make our situation worse. I'm not saying that the kids will stop because he's not here, because he's not the reason why we're doing it. He's the reason we want to do it, you know? I'm not saying that we're gonna stop doing our work, but him being here is gonna set up every class that plays football or at least goes to the study halls to become better people, to go to college and become better versions of ourselves. Thank you for your time. Aaron Johnson. Hello, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? We can hear you, Aaron. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. I'm Aaron Johnson. I live at 805 Pennsylvania Avenue. You guys can hear me, right? Yes, we can. Okay. I just, from the bottom of my heart, want to thank Coach Stoner and the coaching staff for a lot of the little things that they do for us. It's a lot of times where there'll be gunshots out in the community or somebody they hit and hit and run or anything. And they'll always text our group chat and make sure we're good, make sure our family's good, make sure we have food, make sure we have- Excuse food. me, Aaron, and Aaron, excuse me. Do you have another careful. device that's on? Cause we can hardly hear you. It's muffling what you're saying. I can move. Can you hear me better from here? You can try it, go ahead. Can you hear me now from there? I can hear you. All right. But like I was saying, he always checks on us to make sure that we're putting the right foot forward and we're in our best interest. And it's a lot of times where people don't get the success that they do because they don't trust his process and they don't do and they don't do what he tells them to. And this where I just want to thank the coaching staff. I want to thank him 
for everything that they do for us, for everything that they did for me and making me into the, the great person that I am today. And I also want to thank him for helping me be a better person in the community. Because a lot of times our community can be really bad, but he helped the community look at us very differently. Like we had a petition for Coach Stoner and it got over 2,600 signs. And people always donate money for us to get clothes and for us to get cold gear in the winter. So I want to thank him for that as well. And thank you guys for letting me speak and you guys have a very blessed day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hello? Yes, hello. William address, please. William Molina, 744 Village Road. Uh, may I begin? Greetings, everyone. My name is William Molina, valedictorian of the class of 2020 and also a wider university commit. It is with great sadness and disappointment that I'm here speaking today. I never once thought that Coach Thorner would be put in his position, especially considering the amount of care and love he puts towards the football program and the kids. I was fortunate enough to play under Coach. Hold up. I was fortunate enough to play under Coach Thorner for three years. Within that time, I witnessed many generous and selfless acts from Coach Thorner, as well as the rest of the coaching staff. They always provided us with food and water during the off season. Always fundraised the money to support our football team and even spent thousands of dollars from their own pockets to make sure we were always well taken care of. Before Coach Stoner, there wasn't really much of a brotherhood. It was more of a disunity between students that pretty much wanted, that pretty much did whatever they wanted. That was the kind of mentality there was. But when Coach Stoner arrived, that all changed for the better. Through his passion and leadership, the, under, the underprivileged kids of your county flourished in academics and in football. Coach Stoner used his football system to teach us lessons that could be interpreted in, in our everyday lives. He wanted us to go beyond football, always telling us to be a good dude. He especially pushed the academic aspect of high school onto us as much as possible. 21 of our players this year were put in the Eastern PA all academic team, five of which were gold, which meant that they had a 3.8 or a higher GPA. Coach Stoner is the life of our football team, and we can't see anyone else in that position. If anything, do it for the kids. We need Coach Stoner more than anything. We need his leadership, his guidance, his hospitality. He's opened gateways and opportunities that many of us wouldn't have had the chance to come close to. He spurred life to the community. People are actually coming to watch football games and enjoy their time. He spurred life into us city kids. He saved many of us from dif difficult situations. To him, we are more than just his players. We are, his, we are his family. In his eyes, we are young men who can and will be successful. Successful, Young men who are destined for greatness. Coach Stoner instilled that mentality into us, and that's something I take to heart. We may not look like him, talk like him, or have the same blood like him, but Coach Stoner is a major part of our family here. I hope everyone realizes that keeping Coach Stoner as our head football coach is in the best interest of us, the student athletes. Thank you for your time. Joseph Comstock. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, state your name and your address, please. Uh, Joseph Comstock, 1212 Wogan Road. May I begin? Yes. All right. So Coach Stoner is one of the best coaches I've had in terms of helping me throughout my success in high school and future in college. He is one of the only coaches that actually got me in contact with your college's track coach in which I plan on attending college and gave me a chance so I can run track in college. He also is one of the main reasons I stayed focused during school and kept striving to get good grades and not give up. This eventually led me to be a co co-salutatorian of the class of 2020. Um, without him, I don't know if I would have been able to do that because I, there were times before, before he became my coach that I began letting up. But he reinstalled my focus and let me keep going. And my senior year, even throughout injury, he had still treated me as a member of the team and let me still come to all team events as well, even though knowing I couldn't play the game of football. Coach Stoner has helped me a lot with a bunch of stuff, and he's always been here for me whenever I need, and it's been one of the best role models of my career. I don't know why it's even in question that he, there should be another coach with how successful he's been, not only as a coach, but as preparing people for their future. He 
he is also one of the people that believed in me and said that I should continue further on in my career than just going to nursing school and attend med school to become a doctor. Without him, that pro- would have never been a thought in my mind. He instilled that confidence in me to do it. He's installed a lot of my future for me that I wanted to do, but I didn't have the confidence for. This is He's one of the greatest leaders that this city has had and the school has had, and he's been one of the best coaches I could have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Benaha, not sure if I said it right. That's okay. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm sorry, this is the wrong name. Or my name is uh, Vincent Jameson. State your name and address, please. Vincent Jameson, 340 Norway Street, York, Pennsylvania, 17403. Can I begin? Yes, you may. All right. It's good to see some of y'all. Actually, it's good to see everybody. Again, my name is Vince. Vince James, I know a lot of you. Um, I come from a different perspective. Now, I think I'm probably the only person in this whole group that can say this. I'm from the city of York. I lived in New York all my life. I attended Kutztown University, and I came back to York, Pennsylvania. But I say all that to say this. I am a grown man now. But my senior year in high school, Russ was my football coach, Russ Stoner. I met Russ back in 1996. And in that time, I was a guy from the city going off to college to do my thing. I come back and Russ says, hey, Vince, I may have an opportunity to coach at your college. I said, well, Russ, I'm all in. Let me know. So during this time, not only has Russ coached me, but I had the ability and the opportunity to coach beside Russ as well as a grown man. I want to talk about accountability because the same lessons I got at 17 years old going to college are the same lessons that we are talking about and stressing to our kids now. We come at a time in history to where decisions are being made that are going to change the world. And and it's a time in in public, there's a time in this world to where you have to be on the right side of history. This meeting and this board is going to go down in history. I challenge us to be on the right side of history. Some may know, some may not know. I am a black man and I own a daycare here in York, Pennsylvania. I remember one day I went to the office. Russ, like I said, is my coworker, but he was my first coach. And I sat down and I said, Russ, I think I wanna start a daycare. And Russ said, well, why are you thinking about it? Just do it. Believe in yourself and do it. As a grown man, that was all the motivation I needed to start the daycare and get it done and do it. Here we are three years later and we are expanding. We have kids, because I was one, 16, 17 years old, who may have dreams, who may have hopes, who may have aspirations, and they have all the ability in the world to do so. But but maybe there may be lack of opportunity or just the lack of motivation. We are talking about accountability. Russ is holding our kids accountable. I am holding our kids accountable. I have a daycare and I'm going to hold every last child accountable because we live in a time to where accountability is is, is for life, the AFL. You have to be accountable for life. Sometimes you have to make tough decisions. We don't believe in lowering the bar. We expect you to rise to the expectation because we know you can do so. Russ did not lower the bar. Russ kept the bar. The standard is the standard and we rose to the standard. So now 
if I'm just stepping back and I'm looking, I'm looking at a winning football program. I'm looking at a team GPA of 3.0. I'm looking at kids in competition about who has the best grades. I have a 3.0. Oh, no, nah, man, I'm about to get a 3.4. I'm about to get a 3.4. And they're in competition about who's going to be the best student. We have we kids have pulling. Left. Okay. We have kids pulling other kids aside about being accountable. I'm just going to break this down this last minute. What we're exactly voting on, I don't know. Because you cannot replace a part with the same part if the part is not broken. So if you get rid of Russ, you're going to try to bring someone in to do exactly what Russ is doing. I ask that you be on the right side of history. This is accountability for life. This also goes for you. Please be accountable. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Sandy Walker. Good evening, Sandy Walker, 634 Roosevelt Avenue, York, PA, 17404. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank the board for all of your work. We noticed this is a volunteer position um, and it's a thankless position. And the situation that you are in now with the budget is a situation that I wouldn't wish on anybody. Um, it's a cycle that our district goes through. And I want to encourage anybody that is listening to this meeting, that is watching this meeting, is that you have to get out and vote. Because changes made in regards to our funding by our congressmen and our House representatives. If you don't vote, they don't listen. And we continue to be in this cycle where our district is fairly unfunded. Um, I do wish there were more comments in regards to that, but I thank the administration for their work and I thank our board for the work that they have done so far. Um, I usually don't comment often. Um, I, I'll attend meetings, um, especially when it comes to our school board meetings as an observer. Um, but what I wanted to do was one, because I know Russ Stoner, I wanted to comment in regards of my support for him. Now, I don't know what each board member is thinking because of course, none of us are mind readers, but perception is reality. And the perception is that there are board members that do not re want rest owner as the head coach. So I wanted to give my comments from a unique perspective. One as a school board member, former school board member, um, two as a Bearcat alum, um, three, as a former middle school basketball coach for York City School District and a high school coach, varsity coach for York City School District. And then four, just from the community perspective. So one, as a former school board member, um, I brought a different perspective just because I was a former athlete. As a Bearcat, I played basketball, ran track, played volleyball, and then I went off to college on a full scholarship. And so when I joined the board, one of the things that was the problem with a lot of our athletic programs was that we were in this cycle of hopelessness, of losing. Our kids were undisciplined. They were doing whatever they wanted to do. Um, they were still allowed to play and nobody was really making a fuss about it. And so I decided to start making some noise about it. And um, when it came to our football program at that time, we weren't winning any games. Nobody was coming to the games. It was just terrible. Our kids were not prepared for life. Our kids were not passing. They were failing. They were just becoming unproductive citizens. So we needed somebody in there that would invest in our kids. And I didn't care who it was. It needed to be somebody in there that would invest in our children. There were a lot of people that had interest in the position, but Russ for at least two years continued to reach out to board members about becoming York High's football coach after years of losing. But when Russ got into the position and when the board decided, and I wasn't on the board at that time, I had just finished my last year, but when the board brought him on, 
you immediately started to see changes. I wasn't worried about the record because that first year, I believe they only won one game, but I saw the culture and any athlete knows that change doesn't happen overnight. So when I saw the change in the culture in our kids and our family, and I saw them starting to believe in the process, that's when I knew that the next year wasn't going to be like that first year when Russ was there. And you of course, one minute, Sandy. year after year after year, he's been able to do that. So I come to you as a Bearcat alum. I'm one of three female athletes, basketball players in the past 30 years that earned a division one scholarship and graduated with a degree. I know what it takes in order to prepare for college and to succeed in college. Russ brings that to the table. As a former coach, there's very limited resources for coaches in our school district. Russ brings a staff that has the commitment, the dedication and the financial support. You can see time after time, the resources that Russ and his team were able to give our kids that just are not available. In five, I believe that the kids, our young people have spoken for themselves in regards to how Russ has changed their lives. So I'm just asking that you take that into consideration. Again, I don't know what your thoughts are, but take all that stuff into consideration mm. and think about our kids. Think about the accountability piece. Think about the moral piece and look at the statistics because it clearly shows that Russ and his staff have been able to produce results for That's our kids, which time. are the most important thing. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Dwayne B. Hello. Yes, Dwayne. Dwayne B. D. Eleven fifty four East King. I'm here to talk about why I want Coach Stoner to stay as Coach Stoner. He's helped me through a lot of times, rough times. I played for him for four years, I'm class 2020. He helped me through everything. I was homeless. He gave me a home. It was not just him. It was all of the coaching staff. They brought the stuff into the house and everything. I was sleeping in the car. I had a broken wrist. Everything wasn't going my way. He made a way. They made a way. So I feel like taking him away from the city is just a terrible and I don't even know why this would be even taught of I don't know why we're even talking about this in this meeting right now we could have more important things than just taking something so important away from the city and it just makes me sick to my stomach how y'all could just do this to us it's, 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 it's about the kids I know it was my last year I know I graduated but I'm looking back at the kids behind me, all the classes behind me. It's not just about me. It's about us. It's about the city. And just to make this about y'all, it's selfish. I don't like that. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Are these jokes? Hello. State your name and your address, please. Uh, my name is Toby Stokes, 3482 Lexington Street. So with my experience with Coach Stoner, uh, through all four years, as a matter of fact, before my eighth grade year, my, going into my freshman year, I didn't want to play football. Didn't want to attend any workouts. Didn't want to come out. So one day I did decide to come out during the summer, going into my freshman year, and attend one of the practices slash uh, one of the trainings that coach was throwing. But I was actually going as a freshman for the freshman team. And I remember going to get the equipment because I was a quarterback for the freshman squad. I remember going to get the equipment from the freshman locker room. and walking through the stadium, going out to practice. And I remember looking up in the stands, coach was, uh, you know, just fixing up the place, uh, fixing up uh, whatever, uh, picking up trash and stuff like that in the, uh, in the bleachers. And I remember I, I looked up to him and said, hey, Coach Stoner, how, how's it going? 
you know, I felt like it, it was a big step because he was the head football coach for the varsity team. So I definitely did look up to many other players and coaching staff coming in. And then he, he looked down at me and said, Toby Stokes. And I said, yes, sir. And he was like, hey, how you doing today? I said, all right, I'm doing all right. So, and he was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, tell your freshman coach that uh, you're going to drop the equipment off and then you're going to come with me and uh, be on the junior varsity and varsity team. And my eyes lit up because it was, it was an honor for me because I didn't, I, I didn't think that I was good enough at that time. I didn't think that I was skilled enough, uh, had the enough work ethic to be a junior varsity and potential varsity player as going into high school. Um, and then also, you know, the people that looked down on me going into high school, that it just, it was, I didn't want to play football at, at that time. And he's the reason as of right now, as of right now, Yes, I earned. Yes, I earned everything that I've gotten. But right now, he is the reason that I'm going Division One. That I'm playing football still to this day. Going to play in college, be a collegiate athlete, student athlete at that. Because I finished with a 3.0 GPA, two, 10, 20 on my SATs. He 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 helped me out through everything. Made made sure that even when we weren't fed, that that I had food in my stomach. Made sure that I had transportation to colleges talked to many different college coaches and and he never made decisions for me every decision I made was for myself but he always showed best interest we definitely didn't meet eye to eye all the time but at the end of the day that he, he's more than a coach to me he's more like a father figure so for you guys to look at him and say that he didn't change the city now, I, me, I'm well known in the city, and it's and a lot of it comes from him. So, for you guys who want to take that away from not only me but other kids that's coming up too, I find that very unfair. I just wanted my voice to be heard, and I wanted that to let it be known that he's a big inspiration to York City. No matter race, no matter he's a he's the biggest inspiration that's happened in York City in a long time. That's all I have to say. There is one more. Um, YSCD. That's the only name it's shown. Uh, I'm sorry. That's that's me. I put the wrong name. Uh, my my name's Eric Man Jr. I live 245 South Harding Court. I want to start off. Do you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I want to start off by saying, win the day and uh, show me your friends and I'll show you my future. That's a big that's a big thing he said to me. And I took that a long way because all my friends is on the football team and all my friends went to college football. Uh, coach Stoner and his staff is more than the football coaches. They're like a father figure, like people said. They're involved with you from day one. They love you. They show you love that you might not be getting at home. I've seen them take kids way out east and they live out in the West York area, take them home. Eight o'clock at night from practice, make sure we get home. He showed me how to be a leader. Um, I'm not really a talker, so sorry for the mumbling and stuff, but I want to show y'all like, I went to school the hard, the hard way. Uh, I had to go to a summer program at Lockheed University. Wasn't the smartest guy, but I pushed myself. I got to school, still struggled a little bit, but I followed the steps that my, my friends was following. I still had friends playing for the team. I followed them steps I took. Hey, they're getting 3-0, why can I get 3-0 in college? So I pushed myself, I'm like, damn, they're getting good grades, why can I? Excuse my language. But I kept pushing myself at college. Then I have them texting me, how are you doing it? Because I'm the first one to go to college, class of 2017, I was the first one to go to college. And they're like, how are you doing it? I'm like, y'all, y'all are the ones pushing me because I know y'all look up to me. And I looked up to Coach Stoner and them. He said, Eric, you're showing the way. I didn't have a winning season. I know how it felt to lose. I went 0 and 10. I thought about going to Dallas Town where my dad lives. I thought about going to CD East where my family lives. But I was like, no, I have to stay. I have to show a way. And Coach Stoner, we didn't get along at first. I looked at him, he looked at me, but he said, I'm going to show you the way if, you, if I trust you. 
like Nate said earlier, trust is big to me and trust is bigger than me. I told him, I'm going to trust you. And that's the best decision I made in my life. I have a great family. I have a great support system. But Stoner is the reason why I'm at Lockheed University. He helped me. The school helped me so much. Stoner, I love you. And I love your family. And I want to thank you. Uh, we're going to keep winning the day, regardless of the situation. You can throw everything you got at a school, school board. No disrespect. But we're going to keep coming. That's what we do. Uh, no disrespect to y'all, man. This, this guy changed my life. I'm a 3.5 last semester. I'm a little nervous because y'all got me mad because this shouldn't be no situation. Like, he's a great guy. He, he's, he does what the kids need. At the end of the day, you, you might not like him on a personal level, and that's cool because you like, just like people. But you got to like this man for what he's doing for the kids. He puts his, line, he puts his life on the line every day dealing with y'all because you got people threatening him and stuff. That's not cool because at the end of the day, he's helping your kids. The city needs somebody like this. So why try to take this away? From, from the B-Morris, from the day jurors, we push each other every day. Ride, ride, that's all. We push each other every day. We work out together. And it all started 2017, Rush Stoner and his staff. We win the day every day. I live that lifestyle. I live it. I want to thank y'all for giving me the opportunity. But y'all got to understand, y'all take this away, it's back to old York High. It's back to all the football, the laughing stock. We making y'all look good, honestly, school board. You, if you want to get techno, we the one making y'all look good. Y'all are our voices. Why can we count on y'all? Y'all are our voices. Come on, man. We should count on y'all. It shouldn't be the other way. Like, we, we not, we not, we shouldn't be afraid to come talk to y'all. He shouldn't be scared to ask y'all, can we get this for the program? Can we get this and that? Come on. That's all I got to say. Class 17, we win the day. Choose my friends and I show my future. Love. I'm out. Ryan Suppler. Hello, Ryan Supler, 235 Springdale Avenue. I just want to say, commend all the young people and parents and everyone else for coming out for Coach Stoner. Clearly from the testimony, he is quite the asset. Also would like to speak about um, that we shouldn't rush out of recovery, but we should do so gradually and do our best to not raise taxes. I saw in previous recovery documents, I think it was like from 2013, that some of the um, ideas that were used to um, improve the district was not raise taxes and modify the employee compensation packages, either through healthcare compensation or um, maybe changing of pay rates or various other forms that was, that's, that's seen as a form of compensation, I guess I should say it like that. And then there's also the increase in perception and improve recruitment um, to, to lose all the students that are going to the charter schools since those are two of the biggest issues is the healthcare ish, um, increase and the charter school increase. So I just wanted to make sure um, school board members were aware of those previous documents and all the other items that they had in there. And um, a lot of people are doing all the shout outs for the, the, um, the coach. I wanna do a shout out for Annette Anderson. She's a library aide. I think she's wonderful and she's a very nice lady and she does a lot of work in the community. And she's, she's also a professional volunteer, very nice lady. And I, I hope her position doesn't get cut. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you. Uh, Tina? Good evening, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Tino Conquest, 156 South Albemarle. And uh, just want to say uh, we, we definitely need to figure out these budget cuts. I agree with what a lot of Coach Gallon said. Um, we just got to figure this out. Understandable, understandably, there's a lot of unknowns, you know, given the climate. So I just think all options should be explored before making decisions. Um, this last gentleman that spoke, I know Mr. Nett, she actually got me and a lot of guys to come in and, and, and mentor at McKinley. I didn't know that her position was up, but 
the people who care, they need to be with the kids. The people who are with the kids daily, they need to be with the kids. So we have to figure that out. I also want to speak about Coach Stone. I did see on Facebook a comment from a board member that there needs to be a change. There's a reason the change is to happen. I'm not sure what that reason could be, but I can tell you why I feel that the change shouldn't happen. Um, since he's taken over the football program, he and his staff has fully committed you know, to our kids, you know, despite what's been thrown at them year after year since they've gotten here. Um, not only has he committed to those kids for football, which he was hired for, but he's committed to their lives, not just during the football season, but he communicates with these kids throughout the whole year. He communicates with the parents that communicate back with him. This is during the season or during the off season. I remember I got a call from him one, one year, matter of fact, my son's senior year. He wasn't playing basketball that year. Football season was over. But coach called me like, hey, check on Junior. He got a D in, I believe it was Mass. And, and I haven't heard from Junior. He didn't have an obligation to do that, but he did because he cares about all of his students, not just the ones that I hear people talking about are his favorites. I've seen him give opportunities to all of his kids. You perform on the, on, on the field, you perform in, in um, the, the, the classroom, and he'll reward that. He just makes sure that everyone is held accountable. If you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you're not going to be rewarded. And that's what a coach, that's what a leader, that's what some, that's what these kids need. They don't need someone who's going to pacify them, someone who's going to, you know, just let kids do whatever they want to do. I remember I went down to the football field his first year. My son wasn't playing football. I wanted to see what this new coach was about. There were some kids, there were some seniors that were leaving the field. And I heard this, this stuck with me ever since then. He said, man, coach talking about discipline. Half of us don't even know what that is. We don't got no files with nobody teaching us discipline. That was the first year. That's what, that's what he was driving to these kids. Since then, you've seen the change in the culture. You've seen the change in the discipline. People who know me know I, I, I'm not easy on my son. I don't allow bad grades. There's no Ds and Fs in my house. He did get some C's, but it wasn't until football. He came home one day like, oh, man, I got to get, I got to pass these tests. I got to get these, these things in. I got to get this 3.3.3. I said, I'm like, what? I've never he heard you say that. He said, yeah, but in the locker room, all the kids keep talking about they have a 3.4, 3 point that, and, and I got to get mine up. We're competing. I've never heard any student say that before. And I've been in sports in your city since I've been back since 2013. That's when I knew there was a change in the culture and a change that's needed in these kids. That being said, I don't haven't always agreed with everything Coach Stoner says, everything he does, but we've always had a respect. And I like the man because if I have an issue, I go directly to the horse. Like Eric said, you don't got to like someone. I happen to like him because he's always been forthright and he stands on whatever he wants. He stands on what he believes. He's been throwing darts at him. He's been he's done a lot of things where he could have left. But he said, no, I, I care about these kids. I'm committed to these kids. He got a staff to commit to, him, commit to them. And you have to respect that. He came here his first year to the shootings. I had to call him when one of his 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 kids got shot. That wasn't a starter, but he went down to that area to show support and show love for the family. You gotta respect that. When you have a when you have a, a coach and a leader that's making a difference in kids' lives and the majority of the kids' lives, where they want to be motivated, then you have to take that into account. It can't be anything personal. Like Ms. Sherry said, you got to look at the data. You got to listen to these kids. You got to understand what's happening. And what's happening is change, motivation, and impact on these kids' lives. That's what's needed. Thank you. That is all of the raised hands at this moment. Any more public comments? Are there any more public comments? Seeing none, we will move to item number seven on our agenda. Consent agenda, action items only. President Sweeney. Yes. We do have to uh, address section four, I believe which are items of initial concerns. There are also vote, voting um, items. Oh, I agenda. forgot we didn't move, yeah. change, change the agenda on me. I didn't. 
And this is the budget I would I would recommend that once we've moved move these motions that uh, when a vote's taken we do a roll roll call. <clears throat> Okay, we're going back to items of initial concern. Item four. Can you guys all see? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. My recommendation would be that we take the first item by itself, which is the general budget item. Then after that, uh, depending on where we go with, with that decision, we can decide whether we're going to take one through I don't know if it's six or whatever together or separate. Okay, well, we, we're, we're taking a roll call vote on adoption but, of the two. Yeah, my recommendation would be that that be done by roll call. Somebody's going to have to move the uh, the resolution first and then second, and then the board, of course, can discuss the matter. Okay, once again, we're going to take a roll call vote when we do the adoption of the 2020-21 budget. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Opposed? No. Second. Oppo All in favor? Uh, Hold on. Hold on a second. Yeah. Let's see if there see if there's any discussion or any comments from the from the board members before we do a roll call vote. This is Director Orr. This is Director Orr. I, I make a, uh, I want to add a, an addendum to the uh, vote that we can take a second look at the budget if need be, if things arise and items change that we're able to take a second look at this budget. Well, let me just, let me just make a statement middle, about. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Let go me ahead. just make a, a statement about this. The, the, the board has an obligation to pass a final budget. There are instances uh, in the past where the legislature will authorize the school district to open its budget. Uh, in Generally, those circumstances are in instances where the state has not passed its budget yet at the time the uh, school districts have passed their budget. And because yeah, of that, they allow them to open the budget to address any shortage in revenue and things of that nature. But generally, other than that, um, reopening a budget is not a normal process. Um, so I'm not sure you know, what we're talking about in terms of readjusting or doing things of that nature, um, because I think it, to reopen a budget generally, is a, is a full blown process to do that. So my recommendation is, is whatever the board approves is, is going to be the budget, the final budget for purposes of, you know, what we're trying to accomplish here. So um, I don't, I don't like the idea of just saying, well, let's, let's pass something so that we, we can change it. So there has to be discussion about what, what this final budget's gonna be. Is, is essentially what I'm saying. Mr. Gettle, Mr. 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 Yeah. Gettle, Mr. Gettle, I understand yes. completely what I understand.
Ms. Margie? Margie's still on, but both of her, like, she's on two, and they're both uh, muted. I know we have to, I, I know we have to pass this budget tonight as it stands, but my thing is, after the state renders their budget, that we can take another look at our budget. That's what I'm saying. I know well, we I have to pass it tonight. Well, we, we don't, we have to pass it actually before, before June 30th. Um, so if we don't pass it tonight, we've got to pass it before June 30, but 30th. But in this instance, my understanding from what was reported by the administration earlier is, is the state has passed its budget already. And the budget was, was actually uh, flatlined, meaning there was no increase, uh, cost of living increase, which created the revision that the administration reported um, earlier. They, they passed the budget for five months, but they will be re revisiting it for the rest of the year due to COVID. They've only passed the budget for five months. But I, and this is Director Kennedy, and I do recall a conversation that we had around this same thing where we talked about um, because of having the deadline of having to pass a balanced budget by the 30th. But there was previous conversation around we could look at revisiting um, some things again. We did have that conversation. And Director yes, Kennedy, me, we did have Director, that conversation. Yeah. Excuse me, this is Director Sweeney. Yes, and Dr. Berry did state that there will be no problem with coming back and revisiting this budget. Dr. Bear, are you still there? I'm still here. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, but um, can you comment on that, please? May I comment on the fact that we can reopen the budget? Is that what you're asking? Um, the statement that was made about the budget being revisit. So generally when we pass the budget we don't pass it with an intention to reopen it but there are options if there are funding changes where the budget can be reopened as miss kennedy said they're passing a budget for five months um and there could be a possibility to revisit um specific items we won't be redoing the entire budget, but if there are specific items that you want to discuss, we can do that. This is Dave Diffendall. I wanted to clarify the, the Pennsylvania state budget. The Commonwealth has passed a budget for education for 12 months. And they have flat funded that budget for the 2021 school year. So the second point is the state has passed the budget for five months for all the other, uh, all the other departments within the Commonwealth. So you have a, a hybrid budget, if you will. Education has been funded for 12 months. Uh, part of the reason they did that is that debt obligations that that school districts carry, uh, the, debt, the debt covenant, the people that own the debt, the debtors are making, they wanna make sure that districts will be funded. So the, the Commonwealth uh, legislature and Governor Wolf signed a budget for 12 months for education. They passed a budget for five months for all the other departments within the Commonwealth. So and all the other things that the state funds funded on a five-month budget. Any more questions? This is Director Brown. I, I believe um, as par for the course, normally when, you know, we pass the budget, but we're always trying to get grants to assist us with programs or start new programs. So I believe that uh, that may be what Director um, Orr was uh, referencing to make sure we all understood that.
Any more questions? Is that an amendment to the to the mo movement? I mean, the motion, or was that just a question, Director Orr? Can she hear me? Is she having problems? We're in the middle of a motion. Can, can anybody hear me? She's still on there. Okay. I can hear you. I can hear you. Hey, well, where, it, did she make well, that Well, it would have to be. He's unmuted now. Yes. It, yeah, I want to still put through that amendment to passing the budget. If things change, in Harrisburg, I'm very well aware. This is not just, I'm very well aware of what's going on with our budgets. I've been doing this for quite some time. And I know if things do change, and like Mrs. Brown said, if we're able to get some funding elsewhere, yes, we need to take another look at this budget. So that's my amendment to passing the budget tonight. I know it has to be passed as is. But my amendment is to be able to take another look at it down the road. Well, I... Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So is that a motion to amend? It says that... That's we're what gonna I was trying a, to figure. Was it... Pass a final budget, but it's going to be contingent on the ability to reopen it? I mean, yes. certainly, cer certainly, if... if if a, if the budget, I, I think what Mr. Tippendale, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, is that the state budget has been fully funded. And that's the circumstance that I understand that, that we're, we've had before where budget state budgets have been passed after June 30th. And when they do that, they generally, as part of that legislation, specifically authorize for that purpose to be able to open up a budget to the school district. Absent that circumstance, it's a it's a full blown process that I'm not sure I know what that process is, is at that point in time. But certainly, if the circumstance would change, the, the district can do that. I don't. I'm not sure if I understand that we're saying we're doing it, but it's only contingent upon us being able to reopen it. I mean, if if those circumstances present themselves in the future, fair, you may be able to do that. But I don't know if they if if Passing it by contingent upon that contingency is what is what we want to have in a final budget. If that makes any sense, but if, if it's a motion, it's got to be seconded and uh, and approved as an as an amendment anyway. So, if there's, yeah, support, if we there's had a motion on the floor. Pardon me. I'm saying if there's if if the amendment is being presented and it has support for it, it, it would need a second. And then there would be a, a need. So, so Attorney Gettle, are you saying the word that that um, Miss Orr saying adding the word contingent makes makes the motion uh, not relevant? So we're passing a budget. I understand we have to pass a budget um, tonight, but even as um, Director Brown said, if we're we're seeking grants and additional funds. We don't necessarily, well, we have to go through a process of formally oh, reopening the budget versus using those grant funds to, to uh, complement some of the, the concerns that we may still have about the budget? Well, the, the administration can weigh in on this, but I don't believe that, that obtaining grants throughout the year is anything that is anything that is requires opening a budget in order to be able to expend those those unrecognized funds that that we wouldn't have at this point in time so if if throughout the year that's that's some, what i'm asking depart, yeah some department obtains a grant i think the district's capable of spending that as long as it's being used for grant purposes but i don't think we have to pass a budget that says it's contingent upon us you know if we would get a grant that you know, we, we would have to open the budget for that. I don't know if the administration wants to weigh in on that, but we certainly that's do the that. Question, do. That's, that's the question I was asking. So if, yeah. is, so then we wouldn't then, necessarily need to, to do the amendment then. 
Yeah, I don't did believe. I, did I not say? <laughs> did I not say if there's that big word if things change in Harrisburg? Did I not say that if things change in Harrisburg, that we can take another look at the budget? I don't think we can do that. This Director Sweeney, I don't believe that we can actually, the, with the where the vote is at, that we can actually do that. Pat, mm -hmm. we're not passing the budget then. We're still leaving right, the budget sir. Yes, open. we are. Yes, we are. I know we have to pass the budget. This is solely about taking another look at the budget down the road. If things change in Harrisburg, we don't wanna box ourselves in and saying that we can't take another look at the budget. We don't wanna do that to ourselves. We have to leave ourselves enough room to say, yes, we'll pass this budget as is. But if things change in Harrisburg, we have the right to reopen this budget. That's what I'm trying to tell you all. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And I believe but that it was Mr. heard. Ghetto, but if Mr. Ghetto is saying that can't be done, then I resend my motion because this is, this is getting to be a mute point right now. Director Brillian, you were saying? I believe that the administration already spoke. If circumstances changes, we could revisit the budget. But as, as of now, we just need to pass it. Thank you. Thank you, Director Breland. That's exactly what I said. Exactly what I said. All right, so are you resenting it? You, you still want your amendment in there? Are you taking it back? No, I'm going to let my amendment stay in place. I'm going to let it stay in place. We have an amendment on the floor. Need a motion. That was the motion. You need a second. Second. Have a second. Do we have a second for that? Mr. Breland said second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. So now I think we need to take a, a, a vote just on the amendment to see if we're if the board wants to approve adding that contingency that the board can open up the uh, budget if, if circumstances change if that gets passed then i would want a second motion to approve the res the resolution as amended say that again the board now should take a vote on the amendment to see whether the amendment should be approved that there be a contingency added to this resolution to open the uh, budget if circumstances change in Harrisburg. If that gets approved, then I think you have to approve the original motion as amended. Okay, we have a motion on well, floor. But, but first, but, go ahead, go ahead. But Attorney Ghetto, I thought you said that in approving um this resolution for the budget if i understood you correctly I, having the word contingency in there is an issue is that correct my per my personal opinion is is if the if the if the state would change some type of funding if they would go back and redo their budget which i believe according to mr diffendale if i'm pronouncing his correct name correctly <laughs> is that the education component of the budget has been approved as a 12 year budget. There's no, it's not a partial year budget, but if for some reason the state would go back and change that, open their budget or do something and would approve more funding, the historical uh, effect of that would be that they would allow, they would basically allow a special provision in that legislation that would say the districts can streamline the process to open up their budget to account for that change. But if they don't, if they don't do that, then there's a full blown 
reopening process that has to take place that's not streamlined. I don't know the details of that, but it's not something that is, is done quickly. It probably involves, you know, advertising and, and 30 days of comment and different things of that nature, but I can't comment. So then do we technically need, if, if the budget, if, if the, the state would uh, um, have additional funds or make additional funds available to um, districts, then if that would be the case because they reopen their budget, that would give latitude for us to reopen our budget so then we wouldn't necessarily need a motion to, to reopen the budget because that would be um, at every district's discretion, if I understand what you're saying. That's generally been the history of those types of issues where, where they either don't have a budget that's passed or I don't know if they've ever in the, in the, in the past have changed their budget, if they've reopened it or did something to reopen their budget. But that's typically what they've done then. Once they've reopened the education budget or they passed it, if it's after the fact, they give special authorization for the districts to open that, to open their budget. So in essence, we don't even need a contingency plan. Right. Well, that's so uh, that my I, here. I said, so in essence, we don't even need a contingency plan. Correct. Well, I, I think if, if circumstances change that warrant to be able to open a budget, that, the, that there's a process for doing that. Yeah. And that you, gen, you generally don't you generally don't approve a final budget with a contingency. It gets, it gets approved, and then if there is a process or a, a need to reopen it, there's a process to do that. All right, so the way it stands now, it's not necessary to have the addendum added with the word contingency because the 12-month budget for education has been passed. If there's any likelihood of additional funding, the, the legislation would... Uh, allow all districts to reopen their budget. It wouldn't need to be a right. special process. Or there's a process and we could take that process. Yes. Right. Well then we don't need we don't need an addendum then, Miss Miss Margie. Y'all trust that? Y you all trust that? Because I don't. I <laughs> do. There again, yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. So then you have a okay. first and second under, just just number. understand. Right. Just understand right. who you have in Harrisburg. Okay, I'm lost because where are we at? Are we voting on uh, this? Yeah, we're going to we... vote on the budget. Or we're going to vote on approving oh. the budget. Okay, but wait a minute. Wait a minute, Ms. Margie. We're in the middle of the motion. I, I need to know if we're voting on the contingency or are we just going to, you're going to rescind that or we're just going to vote on the budget? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to resend it. I'm going to resend it so we can go ahead and vote on this budget to get this over with. I'll resend my motion. <laughs> So we can go ahead and vote on the budget as is. I think we're at the question. That was a question we asked. We had a first and a second. All in. Fa Are we going to do roll call? Yes. Should we do roll call? Yes. So remind me again. We're roll calling to adopt the budget. The budget as yeah. it stands. 2020-2021. It's, it's the first first resolution under the um, items of initial concern. Just wanted to make sure what I was voting on. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for answer for the clarification. We're going to we're going to do a roll call vote on the adoption of the budget to 2020-2021. Miss Brown. Yes. Miss Kennedy. Yes. Miss Liggins. Yes. Miss Orr. I'm going to abstain. Miss Riviera. Ms. Riviera. I get it, yes. Thank you. Ms. Thompson Morgan.
My apologies. Uh, that's a yes for me, please. Mr. Breland? Yes. Ms. Bryant? Nay. President Sweeney? Yes. 711. Can we look? Can we look at the other resolutions? Do anybody want to pull them? Are we going to do one by one? I think on, well, hold on a second. We're still up at uh, items of initial concern. These are kind of the, the funding resolutions associated with tax levy and homestead exclusion. So unless the board wants to address them individually um, oh, for, some reason, well, for yeah. some reason, there could be a motion to adopt the resolutions as referenced one through, I don't know if that's seven. One through seven. Sorry, I can't. I don't, one through six, I. The, the resolutions go down to AF. We're still up on items of, of initial concern. I offer up a motion since they're all centered around these uh, taxes, transfer taxes, homestead, that we just lump them all in one deal. And I offer a motion that we approve all of these items. We have a first, we have a second. Second. All in favor? Question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. Aye. Hold on. So just for purposes of record, we have a nay. Is that uh, Ms. Bryant? Yes. Are there any other nays? Okay. Everybody else was an aye. Well, yes. let, let, let me go back then because I thought I heard uh, Ms. Bryant give a nay on the budget. Correct. Okay, and the vote was a seven to one? One, one. Seven, one, one. Okay. So now we have an eight, I just one. thought I heard a seven, one. Okay. All right, I think we're now at the consent agenda. Oh. Oh, where am I right now? No, okay. Hold on. I'm sorry, my paper is not with me. Oh, here we go. Okay, consent agenda, action items only. Do any, can we look at those please? Number seven. Our board members. One second. We need to pull item I for contract language. So can we pull contract item I, we will not be voting on that. Can we ask the reason why not? I just said contract language. Okay. <laughs> okay. We are not eliminating it. We're just going to pull it so we can work with attorney ghetto and illumination <clears throat> on some contract language. Mm -hmm. I understand. Superintendent Barry, under Illuminate, we do have a provision in there that um, it's contingent upon final, final approval for Solicitor Gettle 
if you still would like to leave it on. If he does not give his final approval, then it will not be approved or moved forward. But if you want the opportunity to be able to work with them or to move forward with any professional development, it the, the language exists for you to be able to do that this evening. My preference is if there's time to address it by pulling it, that we do that. We may have, uh, we may, we may have issues associated with whether or not we can reach an agreement on it. So as long as we have time to pull it and put it on. We can put it on July. July. It can go okay. on July. We'll just pull it. Okay. I just wanted to put the offer out there. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Wants. Did we all read through them yet? All the directors um, can I, uh, pull item J just for more informational purposes. Can we see what item J is? I'm sorry. But did you I, ask a question of me, Mrs. Orr? No, no. I was asking this. Yeah, I wanted to see the item. See item J. Okay, New York City, City Bureau, Bureau of Health. Health. Yes. The City Health Department is giving us um, money for our PBIS program. Okay. That is what that is what item J is. So item J is us receiving funds from the City Health Bureau. Okay. So that would be uh, um, to provide educational and prevention services. It's for our PBIS program. So we, mm -hmm. we usually use it for like burns courses and PBIS incentives. Understood, thank you. That answers my question. Thank you. You're very welcome. <clears throat> I'm finished reading through, not to rush anyone else, but I think uh, Madam President was trying to find a couple
come to a consensus of who's finished. Thank you. I just wanted yes. to offer that I am. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. You're Mr. welcome. Breland, Mr. Breland read all the motions prior to the meeting. <laughs> Thank you. And so did Director Orr. Thank you. Mr. Breland, show off. <laughs> also, Director Brown. <laughs> Thank you. Also, Director Riviera. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you. Mrs. Liggins is done. Thank you. <clears throat> Just for clarification, um, Director Thomas Morgan, we pulled Jay, but we're putting it back in because you got your clarification, correct? Uh, that is correct. However, I would like to make a correction that my last name is Thompson Morgan. Thompson, I'm sorry, baby. Why I keep saying that? I don't know why. And I thought hard on that. Just give me a hard time. Thank you. I know, but I do it all the time. Like, no, wait a minute. It's Thompson, not Tom. <laughs> I, I don't know it's why. Okay. Is that... <laughs> It's, it's okay. I know. If I get it right, you might have a heart attack. <laughs> Everybody might. Oh. Director Kennedy, are you still with us? She said she was done. Oh, I didn't hear her. Oh, that's what I was yeah, waiting she for. She said she was done. Oh, I apologize. Okay, with all members, all members reading, and we pulled aye. We may have a motion to accept the consent so agenda. Move. So move. Okay. We have a first and a second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. So be it. I have a question. Okay. Uh, does this vote include uh, the voting on the coaches? No, ma'am. No. Okay. It was just a consent item. We didn't get action. to that. Well, it was a consent no. agenda item also. So I, I, I know, but on our agenda, they have it listed as last for all coaches. We're now we're going to move to other business and other public comments. Do we have any other business, any other public comments? Um, um, yes, this is um, Director Bryant. Uh, I just want to, um, first of all, say I um, apologize to the, um, the people that are in our um, Zoom meeting and also watching by YouTube today. Uh, the behavior that sometimes is displayed among the board members here. And I just want to say for the record, you know, I do not want to be interrupted anymore, please, when I am making a statement. I give people a chance to pause and then I make my statement. And especially if I come back and say that I'm talking you know, out of respect, I want you to respect that I'm talking and when it's your turn, then you can talk. So, you know, I just want to apologize to our, our, our listening um, audience out there that, you know, we have to um, exhibit better manners ourselves, including me. Thank you. I, I second that sentiment. And I would like to also say, I don't respect, I don't re like being disrespected and interrupted as well because I was not finished before they cut me off. Thank you. Uh, Director Riviera has a comment. Um, I previously spoke to a ex board member who is my aunt, uh, Doris Sweeney. Um, she asked me about the time capsule 
that uh, when we had Dr. Frederick Holliday here, we put a time capsule away. Now, I don't even know where it's at, but um, if Mindy, you can try to find that out. Uh, that would be something of interest for us to uh, accomplish. It's just for thought. I'll look into it. Thank you. This is Director Orr. I do have some comments to make, but I'm going to reserve mine for at the end of the meeting. Okay. After um, the final vote. Is there any? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes, this is Director Thompson Morgan. I do have a brief comment. Um, and it's to address our general public that had joined us this evening. Um, I'm energized by the participation and I invite you all to um, bring as much energy um, to any upcoming meetings. Um, you may visit the York City School District website for any future um, board meetings and um, you all are invited to those as well as committee meetings. So, um, you know, it'd be great to have this much energy moving forward um, for public participation, input. There's a lot of important decisions that we make monthly that impact our children. And to get as much input uh, on those items as well I think it would be transformative. And I think it would, the trajectory of um, the school district would be one that would be um, very, uh, something that would be a model for other, other school districts. We can be the model. We can do that. If we put the energy that we have in this meeting to future meetings, don't let it fall off. I, I implore and encourage anyone that is still listening and was in earshot, do not let it fall off, okay? We make one important decision after the next. And your input, your energy, your opinion matters. So is as easy as it was to join this virtual meeting it's as easy, if not easier, each time that you join. Um, and that's coming from a non-tech tech savvy individual as myself. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to say also, with, as she said, with all the energy that was put into this meeting, I would like you to show that same energy. Go to our website, please. We need to know how you want your children to come back to school. There is a survey that we had out for a while and we need you to go there and fill it out. Asking how you want it to look for these children to come back to school. You're part of the voting community. Don't wanna hear later that you didn't want your child to come into school so-and-so, so-and-so, when you have the opportunity now to help us make that decision, please, there's an app, York City app, and we also have a website. Please, please, please go and fill out that survey. With that being said. Director Sweeney, can I, can I, have can I yes, make a comment? Yes, ma'am. This is Director Kennedy, and I would like to, um, echo the sen sentiments of mostly everyone where it's um, really amazing to have the participation we had here tonight. And I want to thank the community at large for their participation, but I want to um, actually really um, thank the um, mostly young men, I believe, um, that uh, our students that and former students that took the time to exercise their voice. And I encourage you to continue to do that as um, Director Thompson Morgan said, um, we make decisions each and every month um, that impact you, that impact your families. And um, we work to represent you. And I, for one, 
um, take that responsibility seriously. And I really appreciate being able to hear from you and would love to hear from hear from you on a more regular basis. So please check out the website, utilize the app, and participate in, in, in the process of educating our children. Thank you. And this is Director Brown. I just wanted to also um, echo what Director uh, Kennedy just stated. And I also wanted to just uh, commend the young men and uh, community, former students, students, and the adults that um, spoke today about budget and um, keeping uh, Coach Stoner. I've been on the board eight years. I was uh, athletic chair when we hired uh, Mr. Stoner. And Mr. Stoner came in and did exactly what we asked him to do as far as uh, making sure we had student athletes, not athletes. So I just wanted to, again, commend Mr. Stoner. And it really stuck out in, in, uh, from everyone talking when Mr., um, I think it was Vincent Jamison spoke, where he said we needed to make sure we're on the right side of history and not going backwards. The wrong boat could really change the whole trajectory of our athletic program and the, and the academics that our students have achieved the, the last few years. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. I'm Madam, have to Madam President. I'm gonna have to make a comment. Go ahead, Mr. Breland, Director Breland. I just wanna thank those young men for coming out. And we like to say amongst our village, it takes a village to raise a child. And I believe the children in our village have spoke tonight and I just commend them for making their voices heard and letting them know that this board works for them. I just wanna remind them of that. Thank you. Anyone else have a comment? With that, I would like to say, we all know the story of the Trojan horse and we all know the story of the Pop Piper. We don't work just for those students that are top dogs, that don't have no issues and don't have any problems. We were speaking of Coach Stoner. Yes, he has done some good things. Sherry Washington has did wonderful things. I appreciate the work that she did with her boys and their education. And I hope that she continues to do so. But we have to also remember Anyone that was at our previous meeting, our committee meeting, we spoke of the incidents that came in front of, front of us, things that was brought to the table, administrators that admit that they seen wrongdoing, and we have to protect all of our children, not just the few that made it to college or made it to the football field. And the decision that I'm gonna make tonight is not only on how great the football team was, but the other, the other side of the fence. And if we lose one child, that was one child too many. With that being said, can we get a vote? I mean, can we move on? Can I, I, I let me, I wasn't gonna say anything, but let me just say this. You know, um, there we have to make tough decisions on this board. This is my first term on New York City School District Board. We do have to make tough decisions. But, you know, I am somewhat appalled behind the fact that certain news gets out from this board into the community. You know, I was appalled when um, some of the young men were making statements like, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing this, we're doing that. You know, it was like, how would they how would they know anything of such? How would they know that? About us being selfish as a board. Miss Bryant. You know, hold, excuse me. That I'm not, finish, please. Please. Yeah. yeah. You know, how would they know that? Things of that. So uh, what came into my recollection about grudges against him and things of that nature. Who said that? What, why, who, who put that kind of thought in those young men's heads to say such things? You know, so once again, 
apologize to the public for something like that getting out. Who brought that up? Who made the, who, who made that up? For, for all those young men to come up here and say some of the things they said. We have to do better as a board. We have to do better as a board. Thanks. I agree, but before we conclude this, before we conclude this meeting, let's visit that. Let's visit that question that you asked, Carmen. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Director minute, Riviera is time to speak. Oh, speak. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. items that you want to visit right now ought to be visited in executive meeting, not in front of the public. Okay? And that's where we're going to visit visit them items. Because I got a lot to say and I don't need to okay. say it in front of the public. My, uh, well, Director, that being wait, said, Breland, she asked wait, the question. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait a minute. Director Breland, let me ask this question first before you make your statement. We, we'll have executive meeting after this. Is it something that can be said then or you have to say it now? It can be said whenever it needs to be said. She asked the question. I thought she wanted an answer. That's what I was responding to. That was a rhetorical statement. Okay, well, then I mistook your rhetorical statement, but it was made. Okay. Good. Thank you. So let's move on. Um, let's move on to fall coaching. And before uh, we go there, I would like to say there will be an executive session after this meeting. Fall coaching, fall, excuse me, number 11, fall coaching. Okay, this and is Director Riviera, and I'm going to say that I approve all the fall coaches except Russell Stoder. Let's remove him from the head coaching football coach. Okay. That's not the process. Well, what's so, the process? So I can get so it right. My, my recommendation is, is that since it's presented as everybody on this list, that first the resolution be moved and second, and, and then if there's a, uh, a motion to amend it, um, that would have to be considered separately. But since well, it's see, here you go, Jeff. Jeff, now, <laughs> as far as that is concerned, I'm looking at this and you are we are supposed to approve whatever we want to approve. Now, I'm approving all the coaches, except I'm not amending it. I'm not amending it. I'm taking him off. I'm accepting him. Accept him. I, I, I'm not making an well, amendment. <laughs> All I'm trying to say is we got to get the resolution that's presented on the table. And then if there's a motion to amend that to remove Mr. Stoner, it would be done that way. Because, see, listen, I don't want in this uh, in this resolution, I don't want in this resolution to say everybody agreed for Mr. Stoner to be on the board. And then we made an amendment. No, I don't even want it in there. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the resolution's on the agenda as presented. So my recommendation is, is if you don't want to, if you don't, if you personally don't want to move a resolution that contains Mr. Stoner's name, that somebody else move, move the resolution. Okay. And then you, and then you make a, thing. and then you make a, m a motion to remove them. Okay. Let me explain this to you. As a board member, I have my right to make the resolution, approve the resolution and take anybody off the resolution as a board member. Do you understand that, Jeff? I'm not going to. I already gave an emotion. Now, they can take the motion and do what they want to do and put a resolution in it to put them back on there so we can take the resolution and I'll take it back off of there. But I want my resolution the way I said it. So noted. Hey. Well. We're pulling Russell Stoner as head football coach. You got to get a second. Out of the resolution. Can I get a second? I second it.
Aye. All approved. Aye. 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 Wait, wait. All approved. Uh -oh. oh, wait, 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 wait. All approved. Um, For what? Director Rivera is a motion. Yes. Oh, okay. You know, well, then now. This is not totally following Robert Bull's order. The no, we aren't. <laughs> no, we absolutely are not. No, we absolutely are not. On here, we need to follow Robert Bull's order. This was, you know, correct, correct. But you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, no, I'll go with this way. I'll wait to executive confusion. section. Right. I'll, yes. Right. I'll wait. Go to the executive session. There's a motion to accept this resolution. Um, somebody make a motion, please. I'll make a motion that we accept the resolution as presented. Is there a second? I second. second. I like Question. to pull it. Question? Go yeah, ahead. I like to pull the resolution. You, you now, like every, as far as all the coaches, I want to pull the resolution. <laughs> That's were, following executive rules of order, ain't that Robert Rue? Robert said pull number 11. You just want to take the one name three, off of it. I have three motions on the floor. I'm not sure where we stand, to be honest with you. you we have a motion to approve the resolution minus Coach Stoner. Then we have a motion to approve the resolution as it stands and presented on the agenda. Then we have a motion to remove the resolution. Well, I think what she's talking about is table the resolution. No, she actually said remove. I said remove. The first motion was to, to take uh, Stoke Conner, Coach Stoner, off of the uh, list so that we could approve the rest of them. And you said you couldn't do that. So now we're at, uh, we got to the point where we're at a motion to approve the resolution as stand. Well, hold on a second here. We had a, we had a motion to approve the fall with coaches motions. with the exception of Mr. Stoner and it was seconded. So that's technically on the table. So we would have to vote on that resolution. So if you're in favor of the resolution to approve all the coaches, all the coaches with the exception of Coach Stoner, you would vote yes. And if you're against that resolution, you would vote no. I have a question. Um, well, when when does that mean that the vote for Coach Stoner is? tabled or does that mean that we vote individually by roll call i don't understand what that motion mm -hmm. means we're going to vote mean. by roll call well, that my my recommendation again was that we we tech we traditionally take the resolutions that are on the thing as presented and if you want to make a, an amendment to that to remove uh coach stoner then you do that but you generally start out with whatever the resolution is that's on the, on the uh, agenda as the moving motion. But, but we're, we're bogged down in procedure here now. So um, there was a motion and second with a motion to basically approve everybody with the exception of Coach Stoner. So if you're in favor of that motion, you're going to vote yes. If you're against that motion, you're going to vote no. If the motion is approved, then that's where we stand. If it's a no, then somebody can present the motion as, as presented or some other way. Attorney Gail, I think that's the confusing confusing part. So the first the first uh, motion is to approve everyone except Coach Stoner. And then there's going is there going to be another roll call vote for Coach Stoner? Should be. That depends on what the, well, what I, the I don't really know what that means. I mean, voted. again, it, again, yeah. that's basically saying that you're you're making a motion and you're you're not approving Coach Stoner if you're voting in favor of that. That's my point. Right. So that's that's what I'm saying. We we should be following protocol with Robert Rules of Order. That's why this whole uh, thing right here is is uh, confusing. There was a motion on the table. We should have went through with the motion. Is what can, we should have done. Can I chime in? Um, it, so can we just table it and discuss it in executive session? I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm, 
published no. book. No, you can't. No. 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 We have to, we have to, we, I know, you're, okay, we have to do this here in public. Now, there was yes. a motion on the floor. Okay. And we really should have just went ahead with that motion and then went from there, whether or not, then we would have talked about just Coach Stoner. That's what we should have done. Well, let's let's move forward with it. Let's but, take the vote. But we went from one thing to the other, to the other, to the other. And right now, in honesty, where are we at with the motion? Well, you should know that. We waiting on the vote. We're going to vote on it. We're going to vote on it. A roll call vote. A roll call I vote. I just want everybody to understand vote. what they're voting on because we were bogged down in confusion right now. There was a motion to remove the original motion that was on the agenda wasn't made. There was a motion to approve that with removing Coach Stoner from the motion or from the uh, approving it as part of the approval process. So in my opinion, if you're in favor of that, you're voting yes. If you're not in favor of removing Coach Stoner from the motion, you're voting no. That's what we're doing exactly. first. Exactly. Yes. That's what we need to do. I just don't want there to be any confusion as to what we're voting on. The motion on the floor is to remove Coach Sterner name off of this list so we can approve all other coaches for the time being. That is the motion on the floor. All can in I, favor. Can I say something? Oh, yes, you can. Doesn't a head coach pick their own, um, like, assistant coaches versus staff. coaches or their own coaching staff? Yes. So that's that's a problem for me. What's the problem? <laughs> You're going to prove everybody. Wait a, minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold yeah. on a minute. Uh huh. Let's first the truth comes out. get past this point. What's the truth that's coming out? Speak on it. No, we're, we're, we need to we're vote on this motion. Up. We need to vote on this motion. That's yeah. The let's go. Let's vote. Let's vote. Call a roll call vote. I let's call go ahead and do a roll call vote now. Okay. Roll call on the resolution minus Russ Stoner. Lisa Kennedy. Nay. Cassandra Liggins. Cassandra? Miss Liggins? I'm, I'm sorry, I was muted. I'm sorry. Uh, no. Miss Orr? No. Miss Riviera? Yeah. Miss Thompson Morgan? No. Mr. Breland? No. Miss Bryant? Abstain. Ms. Brown? No. President Sweeney? Yes. Six, no, two yes, one abstain. So his name stays on the agenda. Aren't you happy? Now we're gonna have another uh, vote. Go ahead and make that resolution. I make a motion that we uh, vote on the uh, resolution with the coaches as listed. I second it. That we was uh, Director second, Orr. Do we have a question. Yes. We have a first and a second. Do we have a question? Yes. Go ahead. This is I would like to, I would like to pull, pull the fall coaches. I like to pull it or whatever you want to call it. I don't want to vote on it as of tonight. I think that's a motion to table. Yes. I think we need a second and then there's no discussion on that. If there's well, a wait a minute. I, we have a first and second on my motion. Yes, we do. And so, and so uh, that's right. And so we have that motion on the table, but now there's been a motion to, to table, the table motion your motion on the table. 
So if there's a motion to table, the motion on the table, the motion is table if it's a second. But that's what I asked no. earlier, and no, you guys no. said no. No, 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 no. We have a motion to table. If there's a second, then we vote on the motion to table. If that fails, then we actually vote on the motion that's on the table. Yes, yes. exactly. Oh. Okay, so I'm doing a roll call vote on the motion. No, 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 stop. First up, first of all, let me stop. Let me say something here. Okay, I know this is in the middle of the motions and everything else. Number one, we all know what's going on right now. Okay. Now, the way this is set up right now, especially knowing the issue, and it's confusing to everyone that's there and everyone that voted so far, I'm sure. Let's stop playing this cat and mouse game. Let's vote on all these other coaches And then come back and speak on Coach Stoner. Didn't we so just everybody deny did that. We did that. We've already done that. We already, already, that done we already that. got it on the table. We yeah, already that did that. that. I, 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 move, I, take, I, I second the motion to, to table it. Roll call vote. This is just on the motion to table it. Yes. Roll yes, call one. Motion to table, Ms. Liggins. Yes. Ms. Orr. No. Ms. Riviera. Yes. Ms. Thompson Morgan. Uh, no. Mr. Breland. No. Ms. Bryant. Abstain. Ms. Brown. No. Ms. Kennedy. No. President Sweeney. Yes. Three, one, five. Okay, now we have the uh, we have the original motion on the table to approve the uh, call coaches as presented. Yes. Roll call. We, we need a There's roll call. a motion. Excuse me, please. There's a motion on the table, was first and it was second, to be a resolution that the coaches are printed stands. All in favor, roll call vote, please. Miss Orr. Yes. If I could vote yes again, I would. Miss Riviera. <laughs> no. Miss Thompson Morgan. Yes. I'm still in a meeting. Mr. Breland? Yes. Ms. Bryant? Abstain. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Kennedy? Yes. Ms. Liggins? Yes. President Sweeney? No. Seven two. Mm hmm. Miss Orr, could you keep your comments to yourself? Let's Arnetta, get on please. to the um, Arnetta, we going, meeting. Excuse me, please. Yes. All right. Well, all being said, I think it was six two. I think it was six two one. Is that right? There was an abstention. Yes. Correct. There was two yeses, one abstention, six noes. No. No, no, no. Change that. This wrong. No, move. on the on the approval of the resolution, there were six yeses, two noes, and one abstention. Right. Correct. Six. Okay. No. Moving on okay. to items of distribution. Salary list. Do everybody have the um, link to get into the Zoom meeting? Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes. Hold on. Hold on. What? Weren't we supposed to discuss something about the um that uh, the Doris project? Because we spoke it last week, and I thought they were, we were having that brought up again. And also the situation yeah. with the what? And also the situation with the um uh the um the CV um PI double um regs. I thought that was supposed to be brought up. We, uh, yeah, um, we kind of went past that. I that thought Dr. Have... Barry had explained in, at the beginning of committee meeting last or two weeks ago, whenever we had a committee meeting about the Cadoris issue. So that's what I'm asking. It was that final. I thought it was going to be brought up again this time. Because mm -hmm. I was informed that they had some people who were going to speak on it and I didn't hear it. So that's why I'm asking about it. Dr. Barry, Dr. Barry? Director, Director Bryant, do you have a specific question about the Cadoras Creek? I was told that they were going to speak about this this um, particular meeting. We were going to discuss that again. So we're not, if we weren't, the last meeting was that finalized? Because I don't remember us ever actually voting on any anything that was settled you we we initially voted that we would accept the Cadoras Creek project if there was no cost or anything that was that not mentioned to in the district in public but there was a difference once we got out the opportunity to talk to the funder, as well as when we had additional discussion. So when I came back at committee meeting, I recommended that we not move forward with that due to the fact that <clears throat> we did not have all of the information that we needed and we were up against a really, really short turnaround time. And I felt like moving strategically was more important and more beneficial to the district than moving rapidly. Okay. And but so we, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. That's my fault. Go okay. Ahead. So, so, so because of that, I made that recommendation when we were in committee. Did we vote on it though? That was my thing. Cause I never heard of oh, finding no, your not. recommendation. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Is that what you would like to do? Would you like yes, to? Yes, I would. So it'd be final, you know, so we can, you know, get it out and, you know, let's be move on from it. On social media and got phone calls. I'm like, well, we just need to finalize it and move it on so we don't have to deal with it no more. But I have a question. So what would the vote be this time? Because we voted um, yes to approve um, providing a letter of support for it as long as there was no out-of-pocket or, or cost that came from the district or any anything in addition. And Dr. Barry's report reported that that was the opposite of it. So that was that made made it a mute issue. I, she I don't know what the vote would be, be on. The vote is, would be if because may, she just made if it. I may, if I may, if I may. Hold on, I'm talking. She made a recommendation, but we did not vote on her recommendation to finalize it. That was my whole thing, because I'm thinking we're coming back to that. It okay. was just that, a was my, that was my understanding but, as well, Carmen. We just need to vote on her recommendation, be done with it. So the people know what we're doing. My, Okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, the Cadoras 
Creek program. We need to vote on where what are we we're voting on Dr. Barry's recommendation. We're going to accept her recommendation. Can I get a motion on that? To accept her recommendation. So moved. Mo Second. Any question? The first and the second. Is there any question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose? Nay. Nay. Roll call, please. Mindy, there's a motion to accept Dr. Berry's recommendation for the Cadores Creek Project. May we have a roll call vote? Ms. Riviera. Just so we're clear here, does the board understand the, the recommendation from Dr. Berry is that the board not proceed with the program? Yes. Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. All right. All right. Ms. Riviera. Not to proceed with the program? Not to go forward with the program. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes. Ms. Thompson Morgan. Yes. Mr. Breland. Yes. Ms. Bryant. Nay. Ms. Brown. Yes. Ms. Kennedy. Yes. Ms. Liggins. Yes. Ms. Orr. Yes. President Sweeney. Yes. Thank you. I didn't hear you mention what the count was. Eight, eight, one. Okay, thank you. Okay, so. As a board, we agree not to go forward with the Cadores Creek project. We did we stop the salary list and now it's time to any other questions or any other concerns before yes. I adjourn? Yes, yeah. Madam President. Just as it relates to the Cadores Creek project, I am not opposed with them coming with a proposal and having it thought out and more detailed in terms of the funding stream <laughs> and how the program will be handled overall. I totally agree. I agree too, Mr. Breland. Yes. Yeah, and I, I'm not opposed to I'm not opposed to the program itself. I'm just opposed to how it was presented to us. <laughs> to clarify things, Mr. Kirkland, because I see you are you are listening and you're commenting. The problem that the board had with the proposal that you brought, um, you brought us one thing, and then when we got to the financial part, we found out that we were responsible for it. So to rethink it, to rehatch it, come back with all the proper, what, that's not true. Okay. And they, they asked us to read the public comment too. We didn't read the public comment. And any public comment that we didn't read is because they did not have a name or an address on it. And we did that for any and everybody, including the teachers. Okay. And that was the rules. The reason his public comment wasn't read is because he was signed up for the meeting process. So he was in the meeting the entire time and had the opportunity to speak during public comment in both sections. And he didn't. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Ben, the fact that uh, something just flashed up on the screen and called me, said I was, well, it didn't call me a liar, just said it wasn't true. Um, and it wasn't only on the agenda items only, Mr. Kirkland, because we also had a public comment uh, a couple minutes ago for anything. And during that time period, no one spoke. Anyone else have anything else to say about this? I don't, uh, this is Director Orr, uh, President uh, Sweeney. Uh, these are my comments that I wanted to reserve for last. Okay, is, and, it, for, uh, is, it, is it something for 
exec executive session or for the no. public? No, this is for the public. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, just let me say, uh, I'm gonna thank Coach Stoner. I'm gonna thank him for all that he has done and for our students. And I look forward to working with him in the future. You know, in my 11 years of serving on this board, my consecutive 11 years, 10 of which I was board president, Coach Stoner was hired under my leadership. And we saw something in Coach Stoner that we were willing to bring him on, hire him on. And he not only, the thing I saw in Coach Stoner, it was all about those kids' education. It was not just about football. It was about their education. I mean, if he was tough on some of those kids, he wasn't dealing with babies. He was dealing with young men. Coaches get tough on the kids. And that was a given fact for him. I am just, I have been so, I have never been so disillusioned about being a director. No. After this night's events, after all we have to deal with, with the COVID stuff going on, don't know when our kids are even going to be able to go back to school, dealing with the budget. And this is what we devoted all our time, our precious time on this evening. You know, I mean, this was totally, I don't even still know why this was brought to the forefront I'm getting ready about to tell you. Coach Stoner. Let me finish, please. Let me finish. I did not interrupt anybody. As the matriarch of this board, which I am, I'm going to just put it out there. I'm disappointed in the conduct that was put out here tonight over one person, one person, when we have so much ahead of us that we have to deal with, that um, we have to deal with. The taxpayers, I'm sure, I feel for the taxpayers. I do. I do, but this is something that the city needs to look into to acquire more home ownership in this city. We deal with a high cost of salaries and we don't have, there's few of our people who choose to live in this city, but we have this, this high salary scale that we have to deal with. But I'm telling you, I've just never been so disillusioned and disappointed, but I am, you know what? It prevailed, it prevailed tonight. And I'm sure Coach Stoner is gonna do what he needs to do for our young men. I'm proud of all of our young people, the ones who have gone off to college. I came on this board to take care of our kids. That was my whole purpose. And that's the purpose of a board member. Before you decide to run for a board position, you need to look what that role yeah. consists of. You need to really know what that role consists of. I mean, I'm happy for Coach Stoner. I'm happy for the parents and our students. And I stand with you all the way, Coach Stoner. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you for your speech. And I cannot let that just go by. There yeah, you can't adjourn this daggone meeting and go in the executive board meeting. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Let me say this. I'm not, I'm, I, I'm going to be very nice about this. I stand for the children. I became a board member for a reason because I care about the children of York City School District, not just the ones that send them shiny stars in the uniforms or the ones that's on the top of the league. I care about the underdogs. Anyone that know me know I fight for the underdogs. Now, all this glory and hallelujah that everybody presented, for one, you seen the student get on there first and all but cussed me out right away, jumped right at my throat right away, and I asked them to mute him. Okay, that, that's a child that was my child that I brought up through the school district. And within a matter of two years, 
all that disrespect come back to me, that child would have never, ever disrespect me like that. Most of the children that I've dealt with through the school years will not disrespect me like that, okay? For whatever reason it is, the people that came to me, the long as I've been on the school board, the things that I've heard, things I have seen, the things that the administrator that let go, they even admitted in public meeting that the man, the man cussed at the child and, and fussed at the child and they seen the video but it's okay. I'm sorry. I'm for that underdog. That there kid that you kicked off the team for no reason or all or whatever, all the different um reason that people came, they don't want to come and speak on it you because every time they bring it through, I'm Ms. speaking. Ms. I'm Ms. speaking. No. I can really I'm say speaking. something Ms. to you tonight. No. I can no. really I'm say here. something I'm to you. Speaking. You're going I'm on speaking. about Coach Stoner cussing out a student. I now you're being disrespectful. I didn't say nothing when you were speaking. Now you said what you had to say. Everybody want to know what the problem was. It wasn't because I didn't like him. I don't even know the man. What I do know is all the problems that have been coming across our desk as board members since I've been on the board and it all surrounded this man. He does what he want to do when he wants to do it and does not pay attention to our rules and our regulations. And that makes a difference. You're teaching your, our children. These are our children. We have a moral responsibility to make sure they're mentored by proper men. Now, because he's doing great for just one little group? No, to me, it's unacceptable. He's asked to do one thing. He does what he wants to do. Now, this ain't the first time his name came up. This ain't the first year his name came up. I've been on the board for three years. And in those three years that I've been on the board, I have heard this man's name almost a dozen times every year doing something that he should not have been doing. That doesn't make him great. You send a kid to college, okay. But what did you do to the one child that had to go to another school because of the way you treated him? And it's not just one, two, or three. There's children that... that Life has been changed, yeah, for the worse because how they were treated. Yes, the parents did bring it to our attention. Yes, they did bring it to the administrators. And it laid on deaf ears. There is proof that these things have happened. So when you get to waving your flag and giving everybody all the glory, make sure you know the backbone of it. And thanks again, Sherry Washington, for your excellent job that you are doing with these young men and education, because that's who's doing the education, be it right or wrong. Don't toot the wrong horn. And anybody can do that. Well, no, everybody can't do Sherry's job, but anybody can do that job, that Coach Stoner job, and Sherry can continue to do what she's doing with our boys. In fact, I would like for her to do it with all of our teams, because she is doing a wonderful job. Don't take that from her, even though she's taking it from herself. I'm not gonna take that from her. Now, there's things that has been wrong and all of you board members know, all of you have heard his name come across the board, but things that he has done wrong and how he has harmed kids. And with that, I'm saying meetings adjourn. We can adjourn the meeting yet. I have one uh, more thing. Are we going to executive session? I'm oh, no, sorry. no, no, no. This is not an executive session thing. This okay, go ahead. I apologize. I apologize. Is, it is my great honor and pleasure as the superintendent of schools to a to appoint a new principal to Jackson K-8. Deanna Bowman will be the new principal at Jackson K-8 beginning July 1st. She will be the acting principal. We are incredibly yeah. proud of her and we are very thankful for the work that she and both 
Mr. Dr. Leibelsberger have done at Jackson School. So when you all get a chance to see her, or if you all can get a chance to email her to congratulate her, I would appreciate that. I also want to take the time to congratulate Dr. Phil Leibelsberger, who is going to be instrumental in his new position, helping with the high school data, and he will also be helping to beef up our Bearcat cyber program. So we have more administrative changes coming now that the budget is together and I plan to announce them all in July. But those two, we made the move on this month and I wanted to not, I would be remiss if I did not get a chance to publicly congratulate those two because they've done great work together and I know they're gonna do great work in their new roles. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Barry. Yes. Okay. And with that being said, this meeting's adjourned and we'll go into executive session. Thank you. President Sweeney, can we have um, about five minutes for Jeff Gettle to try and reestablish internet connection? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It is now 10 